Hello everyone, welcome back to the Season 3 premiere of Star Trek Adventures Cerberus Station. I'd like to welcome I'd two like new players. Uh, we have Gate Jumper, who will be playing Dr. Solkin, and we have Genli AI, uh, who will be playing Lieutenant Yarga, ah, Yar Jargavin, Jargavim, that's it. We will be introducing to those two characters momentarily. Normally, we would start off with Captain's Log, but since it's the season premiere... I figured we'd have an ad, uh, a log from the long absent Admiral Zier. Two, Admiral William Riker, start eight, eight three two nine nine point six. Subject: Current status of Deep Space Fifteen. Admiral, I respectfully disagree with your assessment of the situation at Deep Space Fifteen and the surrounding area of space known as the Lasai Expanse. While I am pleased that you have come around to the current situation regarding the Interlink, or the Liberated Borg, taking up residence of the Transwarp Hub, I am concerned with your mandate that interactions with the Expanse should be limited. To the opposite, I will proceed with my efforts to acquire two new starships to assign to the station, replacing the, the state. USS replacing. Lunette. US. As you have said in the past, Admiral, I am not letting a bad hand ruin the game. I will be departing by the end of the day on board the USS Ushan for my scheduled tour of the station. In a blatant abuse, of, blatant my abuse rank, of my rank, I'm bringing the new staff for the station along with me. I shall report my findings in roughly one week. Sincerely, Admiral Zier. Admiral Zier. Okay. So, we start off with... Uh, it has been roughly one month since the encounter with, encounter the with Dominion, the... Uh, uh, the black or the dark royal, and the loss of mm, Commander Bernie Jail and the USS uh, Lunette. For the most part, things have been fairly quiet on board station. The new militant Vitaris have turned their attention inward, dealing with an insurrection. The Remnant Alliance have begrudgingly allowed any stray interlink to pass through their uh, area of space. And the population of the Interlink on board the Transwarp Hub is approaching uh, approaching 700 million. They're forming quite the industrious society. Due to the loss of the USS Lunette and no immediate, sh immediate sh permanent ships to replace it, the support fleet has been taking turns uh, just keeping guard of the station. So... Uh, it is rough, uh, so uh, it is now April 20th, and it is beginning t to look like just another day in ops. It is halfway through the shift. Not a heck of a lot is going on. Uh, when all of a sudden, uh, Lieutenant Derval uh, says, Captain Crawford, please report to operations. And Captain Crawford will stride out of his office. Captain, the USS Ushan has just uh, uh, exited qu ah, Quantum Slipstream, and they will be entering the nebula and will be here in, in roughly 10 minutes. All right. Um, if you can send a message to Admiral Zier, seeing that I'll be meeting him in a... Uh, is he wanting to be transported in or is he docking in? Captain, the admiral is a female, but yeah, uh, she will. No, sir. <laughs> she will be. Uh, yeah. Ah, she requests uh, permission to dock, sir. Out of character, I completely forgot what gender the uh, the admiral was, and I apologize. That's fine. <laughs> that's, that's perfectly fine. <laughs> um, I okay. So you said the admiral was docking in. Correct, sir. Um, all right. I will, I will meet them at the docking station then. Very good, sir. Is anybody coming along with you? I will be going. Okay. No, Keevan's going to be keeping an eye on the ops. Okay. Demos? Uh, he probably actually be on the promenade. Okay. That makes Let's sense. Let's see. So that would make Lieutenant Darval the acting commander on <clears throat> Khan? Uh, no, Keevan. Unless yeah. if Keevan's an oh, yeah, ops right. Keevan. lieutenant commander. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Hell sure. yeah, I am. 
Oh no, we're we're doomed. We're doomed. <laughs> uh, no, I I should have a Keevan in charge episode one day. Just won't be today. <laughs> it happened last week. It was fine. Yeah, it did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but we have no auditory proof, so if you don't have proof, it didn't happen. That is kind of true. <laughs> For folks listening in on stream, we have light our light stories just to keep the crew sane on every other Friday. Most li- mostly they're not streamed or recorded. They're just fun. <laughs> okay, so we are going to cut to Airlock Security. Captain Crawford, Commander Dalrum, you arrive just as the or just as Lieutenant Darval clears the Ushan for docking. Uh, Lieutenant Keel is managing this particular security airlock and its security settings. She nods when the docking station or when the docking is complete, and opens the door, and out walks a, a fairly. Uh, a fairly uh, fit, but slightly uh, uh, slightly on the older side, uh, female Andorian, missing one eye, uh, Admiral Zier. She she walks out, nods at uh, Miss Keel, and then walks straight up to Captain Crawford and extends her arm in greeting. Captain, it has been too long. A feeling that is very much mutual, Admiral. And he'll gladly take her hand. Now. Commander Dalrum, I have... Uh, I'm, I, 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 I'm here to pass on the Ad, Admiral Riker's appreciation for your work in the diplomatic uh, event that happened here a couple, uh, back in early March. It seems like a very successful peace conference... Minus the Borg, of course, but, well, that's another discussion. Indeed, it was good to see so many powers in the area getting along and starting new friendships. Yes. I trust your journey was uneventful, Admiral? Absolutely. Quantum Slipstream is very easy to get used to. I have no idea how I would ever go back to crossing the Federation without it. It does make the trip out here a little faster. Yes. And first up following the Admiral is a Vulcan in medical, in science blue. And this would be Gate Jumper's character, uh, Lieutenant Commander or Dr. Sken, I believe. Or Solken, sorry. I should probably correct that. (laughs) Anyways, please uh, introduce uh, Dr. Solken. Um, I'll come out to the thing and nod to the captain and do a purse cork bow. Uh, salutations, Captain. Salutations, uh, Lieutenant Commander Sulkin, right? Correct. See, so you're supposed to be our new chief medical officer. I believe you'll find the medical bay on station to your very high expectations. I look forward to it, as you would say. I would be interested to check it out as soon as possible. Well, if you would like to follow me, I will take you down there. I'm sure Dr. Abbott would love to introduce you. She's been our acting chief medical officer in the uh, in between you arriving and our previous one departing. Excellent. I thank you. I look forward to this, Captain. And I as well, Lieutenant Commander. All right. And next through is uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade uh, Jargaven. And that will be played by Genli AI. Or Genli A. Um, if you could please introduce uh, Jargaven and uh, describe him briefly. Uh, so he's uh, he's mostly a Vulcan, uh, and uh, uh, but you, you you can notice very different uh, uh, 
differences uh, from an from an orca, from a normal Vulcan. Uh, so uh, uh, he oh well he first of all he uh, he laughs a bit when he, when he sees around where he is and and that's it babe uh, for now so he uh he steps forward and says uh i'd like to, I, i'd i'd like uh, a permission to to come aboard sir uh, and he stands uh in a uh uh Attention. in, in, a, in a uptight uptight position you know? mm -hmm. well your permission is more than granted Please. Okay. And um, he would probably send Jargaven unless he, unless he has any other questions. Um, you'll probably send him to check out uh, Astrometrics. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh... So I assume that I'll be taking over the science officer position, and probably because I I seem to be, to be an expert on on nebulas, so it it would be logical for for Starfleet to send me here, and I can also throw a very good party if you know what I mean. Of course, um, your assistant will be one. Ensign Errol, you'll find them interesting, I believe. Have you ever interacted with a remind me of the species name Errol like uh, score? Yeah. They're officially now they're called the or or Orians? Aurelians? Something like that. Anyways, bird people. Have you ever interacted with a score, Lieutenant Jargovin? Uh not really. I may have read about it, but uh, but I have any concert. Then I believe Errol will serve as a very good introduction to them. <laughs> and he kind of chuckles and you know, sends Jargovin on his way unless he has any other questions. Nope. Fine. I just uh I just had with uh with uh with him. All right. Captain, uh, as he turns and we leaves, and Dalrum takes uh, Salkin with him, leaving you in the uncomfortable position of being slightly too close to Admiral Zier and her good eye, which never actually seems to blink. Captain, if you could schedule a meeting of your senior staff at, some, at your earliest convenience, there's a couple mandates that I wish to pass down in person from up high. In the meantime, I will be in my the CI in the Commander in Chief quarters on deck two. I believe I know the way. After all, I built this, I oversaw this damn station's construction. <laughs> of course, I'll let our two new senior staff members get a little more comfortable, and then I'll be sure to arrange the meeting. Very well, Admiral, or very well, Captain. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't believe you have the power to promote me to Admiral, <laughs> Admiral. <laughs> She looks down. Well, not yet. <laughs> Maybe I just need two or three more stations out here, and I could be technically called a flag officer <laughs> in time. In time. And with that, she will walk right on past you and head out into the terminal, or into the uh, boulevard. Alrighty. Um... Crawford would probably just head back up to Ops, so there's someone of higher rank there. Okay. Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> hey, no worries. <laughs> okay. So we're going to cut to sick bay. Where the captain apparently is. Dolrum and Sulkin. You walk in, uh, Lieutenant Ashia, one of the, uh, the head nurse, stands from her desk and uh, greets you. Greetings, Lieutenant. 
Ah, you must be the new doctor. It's a pleasure, sir. I've read all. I've, I've already briefed myself on your, on your file. You have quite the reputation. I thank you. <laughs> Lieutenant, is Doctor Abbott around? Oh, as if to, uh, um, as if to answer your question, there is a clatter as something, uh, as a tray of glass, uh, f falls off a table somewhere in the back, and you hear a curse, a series of curses. And Lieutenant Aisha uh, just points over. She was. It sounds like she's in the samples area, sir. I look at the commander and just raise my eyebrow. <laughs> she. She's an interesting character. I think you'll enjoy her. I motion to have uh, Silken go through the doorway. Okay. I will head towards the uh, noise of the crash. <laughs> All right. Lieutenant A, not, unless, unless anyone's looking behind you, you just don't see Lieutenant Aisha smile in her all, in her um, naturally alluring way, being dealt in as she goes back to her work. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Dr. Abbott um, is dressed uh, has uh, is wearing the trappings of a civilian doctor, not Starfleet. And now this was kind of your character, Dolrum, so you're just going to have to talk to yourself for a few. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Dr. Abbott, I presume? And who might you be, cutie? I am the new chief medical officer, Dr. Sulkin. Well, pleasure to meet you. I'm Dr. Abbott. Sorry about the mess. I was trying to clean some stuff up, and I managed to bump a tray. I see. Well, I hope I've left it in decent enough shape for you. Luckily, it's been pretty... Um, problematic <laughs> around here. I will peruse your medical files and see what has been going on. Is there anything I should know about? Not particularly. We have some viral infections going around. I've left a list of it on your desk. Nothing that is too out of the ordinary when you have this amount of people and different species hanging out in the same enclosed area. Good to know. I've also left on your desk a list of the known species in the Lasai Expanse and the medical readings we received during the uh, summit. I've been perusing them in my free time myself. I find it fascinating, all the different species that are around here. Excellent. I shall go through them as soon as possible. I would like to do uh, physicals for most of the senior staff immediately and to meet with an, each individual as soon as possible. Will you yourself be staying on as an assistant, doctor? Well, to my understanding, I'm being moved down to the civilian hospital ward, uh, but I'm around if you need me. Excellent. If I desire any questions or anything, I will communicate with you. Look forward to hear to from you. I hope nothing was contaminated. <laughs> and I point to the chemicals that uh, samples that are all broken on the floor. <laughs> I just look down and look back up. Ain't nothing that hasn't happened here before. Fascinating. <laughs> Uh, 
I will head to my office. <laughs> All right. Commander, I thank you. Not a problem. Dr. Abbott, I'll see you down to the, the civilian hospital. And she just looks and goes, lead the way, Commander. Scotty doing accents is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> okay. Just because I think it'd be funny. Yeah. Um, as they're about to walk through sick bay doors, mm -hmm. Demos is immediately being rushed in backwards, and he is holding a Klingon in a headlock. I'm like, no, 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 here you go, here you go. And he just lifts him up for a second, and he's like, come on, just knock out, go to sleep, sleep, there you go. He just puts him on, he picks him up, puts him on his shoulder, like, where you want him? I will come out and see what the commotion is. <laughs> Got a big old boy here that needs a nap. And he has some lacerations across his face. Not for me. On hand! Oh, no, sorry. He's unconscious. He can't. <laughs> he choked him out. <laughs> like, that's just a reflex. He's just... Uh... Is the individual dangerous? Not anymore. Lieutenant and, Commander, uh, what happened? Bar fight. Uh, he got stabbed by another one of the ambassador Klingons. Apparently, he called him a Bektaka or something like that. I think it means bastard. Did you just call him a taco? I, I don't know. It's whatever they speak. I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, he got stabbed, and, you know, I was going to escort him here, and apparently he panicked. The moment he saw it, it was a Federation sick base, so I say check him over. He might have some contraband. Maybe. Hunch. Feeling. Uh, could you please take him to a diagnostic bed? Sure. I'll just drop him on one. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Abbott will look at Dr. Sulkin. Well, it looks like you have your hands full. I will leave you to it. And walks right out of sick bay. <laughs> Way to delegate, Commander. Way to delegate. And for Do Dr. Sulkin, uh, Demos is an eight foot tall robot. Do you still have the little floaty thing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Midas floats through the doors a little bit shortly thereafter and says, I really wish that you would not move so fast when you were, str when you were attempting to deprive another organic being of oxygen. Uh, no, you're not hanging out with Decon for a week now because of that statement. I am sorry. Oh. Okay. Midas Maybe makes a couple little, of days. My, Midas droops a little and makes a murp, murp, murp sound. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if you need anything, just um, give me a shout. Thank you, Commander. He's gonna lean in and pat the Klingon on the chest, like "Good night, little princess." Make sure I make sure to tell him to call him that. He snores. Okay, come on, Midas. Following. <laughs> He'll just head on out. Okay, so you have a currently unconscious Klingon in your sick bay. <coughs> okay. I will run a track order on him and see what's going on. <laughs> Is it as he says, basically, of the, uh, let's see, control medicine. Yeah, run me a control medicine test. This is going to be a difficulty zero because you might need momentum. Might. Will. And if you have anything. Two All right. Sixes. That would be two momentum. <laughs> All right. So there is a, there is a, well, what uh, Demos classifies as a stabbing is, well, what a, it is not that terrible, at least for a Klingon. It's a small dick, it's a dick tag wound through the um, uh, side ribs. Missed all the minor organs. It only pierced uh, one of its or one of the Klingon livers. I believe they have three of them. 
if I'm remembering my Klingon biology. I know they have, like, if, at least two of everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything. They're redundant. Everything, yeah. Thanks, Discovery. Never needed to see that again. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so um, I will just run the uh, cortical scanner across him and heal the separary wounds. And uh, then uh, basically I am going to knock him unconscious so he can sleep off the drink. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't find much in the way of contraband on him. Uh, he is the, well, no more than any average Klingon. You find two knives, which is not really contraband. Uh, you find a small vial of a thick green sludgy kind of substance. Not immediately identifiable, but it's it doesn't look like it has been removed from its um, protective capsule. Okay, I'll ask uh, the lieutenant to uh, run a scan on it to see exactly what it is. Lieutenant Aisha takes it, and she'll take it over to the... uh, She'll bring it... Spectrometer. Yeah, that's it. The spectrometer, an analyzer. Cocks her head, and she... It does its little um, bleeping. And she'll return. And she'll toss it to Demos, actually. Doctor, this appears to be a Klingon aphrodisiac of some sort. Well, not entirely sure how they got it on board the station. We haven't had any Klingon freighters arrive in the last month. Perhaps he's been <sighs> stockpiling it. Yeah, it's called Targhorn. It's ironic because Targs don't actually have horns. So, you know, the other kind. <sighs> okay. Thank you. Make sure when he uh, starts waking up that uh, at least three security guards are here. Agreed. You have a good few hours before that should happen. Excellent. Now I'll go catalog this. Have a good day. And he stomps out. <laughs> Sounds like Ed 209 from Robocop when he leaves. <laughs> ah, I like to think that even though the station has fantastic in- inertial dampeners, it still shakes a little bit wherever Demos walks. Oh, he does it on purpose, actually. It's uh... <laughs> Rami allows this to happen just so if anyone is being bad, they know when he's sneaking up. <laughs> it's an intimidation trick. Fair enough. He's like, oh no, the robot man. Okay, so we are going to cut to the astrometrics. Uh, as soon as I remember where the heck the astrometrics uh, sheet is here. Uh, but that's physics, planetology. Here we go. Is that it? Nope. It has been so long since I've used this particular set. Uh, have I lost it? I hope I didn't accidentally misfile it. It looks like I must have. Okay. Uh, nope, there it is. I put it under stellar cartography. That's why. Okay. We are under stellar cartography. Where our new doctor, our new uh, lieutenant enters, and you find a uh, trill engineer who is performing some calibrations to the system and as soon as I go find him uh, he is wearing the chief specialist rank so he is not a, an officer but rather one uh, but still of importance as I will pet. say it's actually a chief petty officer. Oh, chief petty officer. Thank you for reminding me. I am not good with yeah. ranks. Uh, also, you don't see it until actually entering. Is perched up above the image. One of the imaging arrays is a bird person. Uh, wearing the... Uh, she is of the race known as Score, or I think they're called Aurelians officially now in Star Trek Adventure. Either way works. And... She's just sort of kicking her feet, and they're making small talk. Uh, for the last time, Errol, I've told you not to take the flux coupler. Oh, 
Um, you must be uh, a yeah. new science officer. officer. So I, so I, <clears throat> um, so I enter very slowly and to observe what's what's going on, and a little, uh, a little surprised actually, and uh, uh, but I had read the, about them and and again I, sm I smile. Uh, then I said, "Hello, uh, I am I am returning our." Uh, Jargon, and you are probably will be my assistant here here at the at the science department. Well, I'm technically not in this department. Um, I was just making some calibrations to some of the holographic projectors here. Uh, I'm Chief Petty Officer Nia. I'm in engineering, so uh, if you I do something wrong, yell, uh, bring it to Lieutenant Commander Keevan. And this one here is Anson Errol, who we actually found as a stowaway here on the station, if memory serves me correctly. She uh, juts out her wings and slowly gl and glides down to the uh, podium in a uh, graceful arc i prefer the term f preferred i prefer that the term that i insisted upon a reassignment sir and she looks at the lieutenant i am part of your team sir ensign earl i've been keeping the chair warm while trying my best to do something scientific down here All right um you seem to know uh about uh about the about the station that is um uh, if, you, if you don't mind me asking uh, uh how how do you so so uh where are you from and how how did you learn our, our language I mean, I assume that our language will be uh, kind of different, uh, different, and our and our universal universal translators wouldn't actually work. She taps her comm badge. This is what's keeping us communicating, sir. I'm hearing you through a series of shrieks and clicks, whereas my shrieks and clicks are being translated and are being muted. And translated locally to your uh, through your uh, universal translator, sir. Um, as for my me, well, not many score served Star Starfleet, and I'm proud to be one of them. Um, indeed. Uh, and I turn to so your uh, you said you are Nia. That is correct, sir. Uh. If if you if you did make 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 a mistake here, don't worry. I, unless unless it was a huge mistake that's gonna blow up the station. I'm not gonna mention that to your to, to your uh to 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 the to the uh, to the engineer chief. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and, and, I, and then I smile. And Neil will sort of nervously chuckle, since. During them being partially Vulcan, Vulcans are sort of hard people to read. And he'll be like, well, um, if you don't need anything else, I have a couple other, for lack of a better way of putting it, uh, errands to attend to here on the station. So if you'll excuse me, Lieutenant, and he'll turn to Ensign Errol. Errol? Errol? The flux coupler. Yes, yes, yes. And she'll produce it from one of her tool belts. Thank you. Lieutenant Ensign and Nia will walk out of Astrometrics. <laughs> All right. Uh, Errol just... Errol. He was, so I said to, so I said to Errol, he was a kind of nervous, wasn't he? And not because I sensed that. 
it's just his facial express it's yeah uh, his facial expression actually and uh, but that's okay i enjoy this kind of uh 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 scenes where i uh where i try to be first a perfect spoken and then uh people find out that i'm not really one of them she blinks slowly and nods her head doesn't seem that she's well she's not laughing per se uh ensign ne or the ah uh, what was it chief something or other petty uh, petty officer chief petty officer chief yeah. specialist yeah chief works yeah the chief is jumpy i think it had some i would recommend not sneaking up behind him and yelling boo that has happened on two occasions uh once sent him to the sick bay and once sent the person that yelled boo She is... Anyway, sir, um, the holographic imaging has been fixed. The uh, All the uh, accumulated sol stellar cartography data of the Lasai Expanse can be found on this console here. And all the information that has been gleaned through expeditions through the Transwarp hubs can be found here, here, and here. Good, good. Everything seems to be in order. And it's, I've seen, I, I saw that you, uh, you've made, uh, well, you've all made installations on on the new, on the new on the new X-ray uh, sensors that I I I had talked about in a in a, in a report a uh, 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 few months ago, and that's good. I'll be using that soon, and good. Anything else to that I should know? Of importance? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, never order a, never order any any red drinks from the Bolian's bar. Those are apparently reserved for Klingon digestive tracts. I learned that the hard way. Then she caws as if she's trying to laugh. That's. Uh... Yeah, no, I'm certainly not doing that uh, in 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 in, the, in this week. But at some point, I might try. I try it out myself. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Now we are going to cut back to ops, where the captain walks in on Lieutenant Commander Keevan and Lieutenant Darval. Ops is looking a little bit barren at the moment. We should probably fill up the ranks of people sitting at chairs. If only they hadn't slashed our budgets for extras during the um, season break. <laughs> <laughs> you mean uh, just help detonate one ship, so... Yeah, something along those lines. Uh... Which is the polar opposite of what happened on the Nighthawk, where we had too many people for our <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Captain? Chief? Well, everything has been ship shaped since you left. Anything I need to be aware of? Uh, not at the moment, Lieutenant Commander. Excellent, excellent. Except, hold on. We'll be having a senior staff meeting in about let's call it about an hour so of course you'll need to be there i better go get cleaned up with your permission captain of course and keevan's gonna go ahead and bust out of there and head to his quarters Captain, I'm on. I think this might be one of the very few times that you and I have sat alone on this bridge. I believe that would be the case, Lieutenant. Yes. Hmm. Dolrum walks in. 
<laughs> Just when I thought I'll get some bonding time with our comms officer. <laughs> and walks Dalrum. Completely minding my own business, like looking over a pad as I walk, as I'm trying to catch up on reports. Walk in, look up. Where is everybody? Um, either, I believe, showing our new senior staff around the station, or, in Lieutenant Commander Keevan's case, getting ready for our senior staff meeting with the Admiral. Is it a formal staff meeting, or can I just go as this? Um, you should be fine in just that. It, the Admiral didn't give me anything that would... Any sort of sign that said it would be formal. All right, well, I'm going to go see if I can figure out where the heck all the crew is so that we can get some more people in here. <laughs> it's not good to have a fully operational ops with two people in the room. Of course. And Darfal just raises his hand. I believe I still count as a person, sir. That's what I meant. I walked in to two people. Oh. I apologize. Darval, you're the most important one. You're always here. Yes, sir. I'm pretty sure... At this point, I am certain that I have been surgically glued to this chair. <laughs> well, if that's true, then we need to contact the new chief medical officer. <laughs> that was not true, sir. That was an attempt at humor. I, I like that. smile. <laughs> and Darval just goes back to working his console now does anybody have anything else they'd like to do before the senior staff meeting uh yeah okay Demos is gonna bug Kivon ah. <laughs> my boy okay uh Kivan, you are in your quarters getting uh fresh Spruced dressed up. and ready to go Basically getting the um, level of grime off of his, you know, everything. Yeah. All of a sudden, there is a knock at your door. Not a chime, a knock. More of a thud. Yeah, okay, yeah. I know what that is. Enter! Hey, howdy. Howdy, Demos, what can I do for you? I got a fun little side project I was... Um... I'm going to get your help on. He's going to hold out a pad and hand it to you. We have a bunch of new friends, just not that far away from the station, and um, one of them I want to give a little gift to. And hopefully the others, hey, might like it. Um, kind of help them out a little bit. Um, yeah, and on the pad there, it's a, it's a hollow armband emitter used uh, by the first CMO of the station to basically be his mobile emitter. But Demos has co-opted the design to admit a um, tracking hologram to overlay on someone else's body. And he's just needing help uh, design the programming for it. Mm, fascinating. It's almost like a holographic overlay. Yeah. Well, I figured that a lot of the... Um, uh, former Borg and the buried Borg, they, um, their history kind of sucks. You know, they're people, they get taken and they get turned into that. So I figured, why not help them have a little sense of their old identity? Especially gotcha. if they want to go through, you know, full prosthesis reversal. You know, might as well give them something to look forward to, or at least to hide the scars, if they so wish. Yeah, considering from what I've gleaned from some of them so far, that the prosthetic removal isn't always that successful, because some of it is so interlinked with their bodies, especially if they were assimilated at a young age. Believe me, uh, Borg, Borg technology is a few things that I kind of focused on, but I didn't get become a master of it all. Uh, well... For me, it's to look at a Borg is kind of like looking at, in, in an odd way, what the humans on my Earth did before we went full, well, robotics. We 
they didn't care about the appearance of it. Most of it was streamlined, but, you know, we didn't have necessarily have both eyes swapped out. Sometimes we had one. Sometimes a person decided to get, you know, a bigger arm, bigger legs, just because it was for their profession. So, it's a little weird seeing how we went down a path of accepting it. They went, well, they were going to be forced into it. It kind of, kind of gives the fuel for the separatists that uh, that left. Ugh. Yeah, I very much agree with you. That's what I was going to say. That the, most of these, I mean, these Borg were forced into it. I can't think of any particular person that actually wanted to be assimilated. However, you know, there's always one in every crowd. Deckard. Yeah. Yeah, nevertheless, yeah, that sounds like a great project. I've been renovating some extra science facilities that we have over, like, on between decks 111 and 118. You know, that kind of where I was looking at doing the full-scale version of the project we were trying on the Apollo, which I'm not giving up on that necessarily yet. I just don't need a, another um, plasma shower like I got last time. Well, it's a good thing you survived that, because, you know, plasma and flesh don't really uh, mingle. Yeah, luckily I was wearing enough of uh, um, protective gear, but still, that, that that burn on the left hand didn't, you know, really feel all too well. But luckily, last month's kind of healed that up. Yeah, it's good. But, um, yeah, if you want to give us a crack, wouldn't mind. Yeah, sounds like a plan. We'll definitely work on that. Come on. We're all... Believe me, figuring out where your race decided, to, you know, your your humans decided to, you know, turn themselves fully robotic is kind of both an engineering and a scientific curiosity. And I mean, that's both, up both my fields. So, yeah, definitely. Excellent. Thank you. And yeah, the, the sooner we can, the better, because... You know, it's a gift. But I don't want to inconvenience you. Well, I mean, I've got Nia being able to take up a few extra responsibilities. So, um, and I think we've got to have somebody, a couple of, um, a new engineering team coming in potentially in the near future. But I haven't heard anything from the Ad Admiralty about that yet. But I don't really get to the diplomatic portion of that, if you know what I mean. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I've been told that there's going to be some shuffling around too, especially with you know Admiral what's his face, um, Riker, uh, wants a little bit more of a, a presence, and I just said no, mostly. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I do know that the Ad the Admiral Zier is on station, so. I know if you've you know about the um, staff meeting we've got here in about twenty minutes, right? No one sends me memos. Demos, you can connect yourself up to the station, but you don't know about an officer. Yeah. <laughs> you, you might want to check with the captain real fast because you know we got a meeting in about twenty. Oh, great. I'll have to push some plans around. Okay, well, I'll see you at the meeting. Sounds good. He's just going to walk out. He's like, ah, Malacca. All right. I just grin because it's just like, wow, I'm not the lowest person on the rung when it comes to communication. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have anything they want to talk about? do right now doesn't sound like it can I have a meeting with our new beta shift commander sure <clears throat> we'll be in the uh, let's see so here's one I gave you your own office and now I can't find it so I have my own office. Yes, you do. <laughs> somewhere in there. <laughs> it's somewhere in here. I have far too many things and need to sort out all my 
set pieces. So we're just going to sit you in the captain's office, pretend it's your office, and don't tell the captain. <laughs> okay, so alongside... Actually, this one was probably promoted on beta shift to... By the way, uh, this was Keevan's character who, as we needed someone to replace Bernie Jail, we have now Commander Surratt. You wander into the ca uh, the commander's office, and you've uh, summoned by Commander Daldrum. Commander, what can I do for you? Ah, yes, Commander, please come in, sit down. I just wanted to go over some of the plans that we have started looking at for Beta Shift with the loss of uh, Commander Je Jaleel. We are looking to redo some of the beta shift processes. Well, I'm very interested in seeing what we can do about the station. I've gotten my briefings about Deep Space 15, and I find it a fascinating location and experience that we're here for. So I am willing to work and coordinate with Alpha Shift to be able to see what we can do to make things a little more streamlined. That's awesome. Our previous commander wasn't exactly as open to new ideas as some should be. Well, as, as many Vulcans like myself decide to believe in, there are multiple infinite possibilities. So, you know, some people are a little, well, let's just say some people are some people. Right. Completely uh, agree. Well, the first thing that I'm going to have you do as the beta shift commander is start going through your duty rosters and start making a list of bridge officers for us. We've been running a little bit of a skeleton crew in ops, which doesn't work as well when we're starting to become busier and busier. Yeah, I have noticed that. I mean, I'm thinking... And I mean, I don't want to step on any toes, but I know that there probably should be at least a complement of six in ops at all times, not including the commander on station. You are very correct. We need at least two science officers, an engineering officer. Darval is great, but Darval is only there for is it two shifts of the three. Yeah, two of the three. The man never sleeps. But... We, I want another ops officer uh, on duty as well to help streamline the process. Well, yes, I will definitely be able to take a look at the duty rosters that we have, see if we can make some moves, but I will very much want to communicate um, any possibilities with you before we make the move, because I just... I'm confident in my abilities, however, I don't know the station as well as yourself, Commander. Completely understand, and that's I'm making myself available to you. And I hold up a pad and hand it to Surat. Here's a list of all of the beta shift uh, chain of command as it currently stands, and the department heads for beta shift, and the uh, current duty rosters for beta shift. I want you to take a look at it, and if you could give me your suggestions for bridge officers for beta shift, I would love to take a look at them. Yeah, that definitely sounds amicable commander um, I will do that as soon as my next shift begins and I will actually try to get a better assessment of the beta shift crew so hopefully I will have this done by week's end awesome if you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out to me or the captain uh, we aren't trying to throw you in here completely blind on beta shift well, I appreciate that, and I will try to communicate in the least offensive way, because, you know, with the differentials of alpha and beta shifts, I don't want to be, you know, taking anything away from anybody's time. If we can get the station running efficiently, it's no time wasted. Thank you, Commander. Uh, may I take my leave? Absolutely. Here's your uh, pad, and... Let me know if you have any more questions or suggestions of people. 
with you coming in, we're also looking at revamping some of the duty rosters across the way in the, across the entire station. That sounds pleasant and acceptable. Sounds good. Thank you, Commander. And he does a little bow. I do a head nod and uh, say, you are dismissed. Sir. And he walks out. And no, he is not Bernie Jail is a Vulcan. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, he's already much more amicable. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we are going to cut to the conference lounge. Which has not been touched since the massive uh, diplomatic session of ages past. Okay. <laughs> that's a lot of people. Yep. Just cleaning up some cleaning up some I tokens for, here. Forgot how many people we had on that briefing. Yeah, there were quite a few. So we're gonna set up the people. Oh, we also got some of the podium here. This is, this is actually huge. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yes, um, this is a set piece made specifically for Cerberus Station by uh, one on DeviantArt known as Falk. It's a multi-purpose. It work. Yeah. It's a multi-purpose. Um, it says Deep Space 15 right yeah. there where I'm pinging. Yes, it does. <laughs> it makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> makes all of us happy. It does. And... Uh, just to keep the funny little trend, you all have little you know, cups of water at your table. As Demo starts walking in, it's like it's like the T Rex from Jurassic Park. You're like, uh oh, <laughs> he's here. <laughs> At your seat, you just have motor rail. <laughs> <laughs> as the as you all sit, um, Admiral Zier stands and heads towards the. Or head, heads towards the uh, briefing panel behind Demos and Keevan. I'm going to be brief. Uh, com captains, commanders, etc. Uh, my superior, Admiral William Riker, is... Well, he's stretched very thin. She sort of smiles. Between us, uh, Admiral Janeway, and her Starfleet Academy Delta Quadrant snafu... And Starbase Deep Space 16, suffering no end of technical difficulties. Let's just say that you're not the only station that has his attention right now. Probably for the best. However, due to the myriad of diplomatic issues, and most recently the contact with the Dominion, which has really riled up the bigwigs in Starfleet, some of them are actually breaking out their anti-changeling security measures again, which is quite f extremely s terrifying. <sighs> Needless to say, the Admiral is not all that happy with how his sector admirals are running the things. To which we told him, this is Starfleet, and I, we've, we've read his record. We know precisely the sort of stuff he riled up when he was commander. Anyways... The mandate is for the time being you have no star you have no starships that will be replacing the USS Lunette. I am attempting to secure some, but you will have to make do with the Slepnirs, the runabouts, and any other starships you are able to reassign. We would prefer to keep your existing support fleet scouting through the Transwarp hub. Uh, and where, what what I'd like to see happen is working with the Borg, the interlink they're called, to reopen parts of the gateway that have been closed for whatever reason. Not in, apparently they've been closed off since l before this station ever was ever founded, and we'd like that to be rebuilt. We're attempting to tie in, or we're attempting to research, ah, 
we will be sending a research team dedicated to studying the Transwarp Gateway's intricacies, and we will be attempting to tie in a, or create a new Transwarp um, entrance back in the Alpha Quadrant, deep within Federation space. While the Graviton Catapult is a great thing, if we could surpass it within even a year, that the amount of it would cut down travel time within this galaxy. We wouldn't even need quantum slipstream. And then she sort of pauses as if trying to put off saying bad news. Captain Crawford, the mandate I've been given from Admiral Riker is that with the USS Nighthawk and all of Starfleet intelligence assets being pulled from the Lasai Expanse, that the presence that Starfleet's presence should not extend too far within the expanse at this time. He is concerned at the volatility of the diplomatics uh, involved, especially if uh, Captain Singral's meddling is, especially once we, uh, especially once we have been informed of Captain Singral's meddling in Vitar's affairs. Needless to say, I don't care about that. Do what you need to do within the expanse. Just try not to poke anything that will spontaneously combust. Questions? I think those are reasonable restraints, Admiral. I'm sorry, but what do the smart guys do? Uh, hello, Admiral. Yes, so I, yes, I assume that I will uh, be also joining these uh, these teams that are going to open up these new uh, these new sites for the trans uh, oh, or I should remain in the station. Your primary duties will fall under that of Starbase of Deep Space 15's mission of exploration. You will, of course, study the strange stellar phenomenon that is this nebula. Anything found in the Lasai Expanse and whatever catches people's interest through the existing Transwarp hubs. Um, the team who will be working on the new Transwarp hub node may require assistance, in which case, if the captain wishes to second you to such a permission, or such a mission, that is well within his remit to do so. Okay, understood. And uh, I, I'll just uh, ask re respectfully that uh, the new send that those teams found, uh, uh, will be sent will be sent to my um, uh, to my uh, to my knowledge, so I can uh, so I can go over them. And then then in a, in that enough topic. As you as as you as you could see, he, he started to, to feel a bit more stressful, and um, and every, everybody should should have noticed that 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 uh, uh, that uh, Jai, Jai Ving, uh he looks as uh, more stress. Of course, Lieutenant, and she stresses your rank. Now, apologies, Demos. To answer your question, it is believed that the crew of the USS Nighthawk, just before they were pulled out, decided to uh, light a match that lit the fires of insurrection within the Vitars Imperium. They found a, for lack of a better term, gulag of Vitars citizens that were not treated very well by the regime instead of complete instead of following the prime directive and keeping the hell their hands the hell alone they decided to interfere with the with the affairs of a sovereign state and decided to spread awareness of said gulag and gain sympathy 
So, you said that you're looking for ships. Why not just take theirs and give them to us? Yeah, she smiles. I'm afraid that is not under my direct command. The most Starfleet intelligence has a... Well, attempting to gain control of Starfleet intelligence assets is like trying to hold water with two or with two hands yeah you'll probably catch one or two but most of it will drip out by the end of it uh, I, no disrespect for starfleet intelligence but we should rebrand them uh, believe me i wish i could but that is not my i am not here to talk shit about other starfleet departments that are not my that are not my own that's what uh people do in that's what people do on earth out here we get things done captain crawford as far as i'm concerned you've done a decent you've done a pretty decent job given the uh aggressive and uh the aggressive nature of some of your neighbors and having almost a billion borg nearby does not make for a pleasant target but you seem to be doing well, and I have no official complaints or reprimands for anyone. I'm glad to hear it. And it's at Admiral. that note where she opens her mouth to speak, but uh, ah, Lieutenant Darval's voice cuts through the communications. Captain Crawford and assembled individuals, I apologize for interrupting. There is a Nalu vessel on approach. They are requesting permission to dock. Um, I'm trying to remember the Nalu or the, oh those people. The fish people. Okay, that's right. Of course, uh, give them permission to dock, and I guess we'll get some diplomatic suites prepared for them. Yes, sir. I shall break out the hose. Admiral Zier raises an eyebrow. That was the lieutenant's attempt at humor, Admiral. No, that's actually how we fill up the quarters with water. Right. They're an aquatic species. Admiral, do we have any estimated time of when we are going to be receiving new support vessels? Uh, it's not when, it's if right now, Commander. Admiral Riker doesn't want us poking our noses in the affairs of the Lasai Expanse right now. He deems it as too politically volatile. Too many species in close quarters. If we poke the wrong ones at the wrong time, it could spark a further... Um, it could. There is the potential for this sector of space to fall into our... To fall, or join the Federation, and become fast friends there's also the strong possibility that now that many of them have regained space travel that whatever rivalries they had once before will rise up again and we don't want to be caught in the middle of it we would rather be seen as neutral ground i say pish posh to that and i'm trying my best to acquire some new starships for you but the politics of such things are tedious well, I would think the Admiral would want us to get involved as a neutral party to end disputes and bring a new piece to the area to bring in new members of the Federation. Uh, he would rather that such species... Uh, he would rather that you do such things through with vessels that are not combat or are not technologically superior to most of theirs. He wishes to play it casually. Or not casually, cautiously, not over, not aggressively, or waving the flag too uh, patriotically. I'm not entirely sure why. He's not been this type of poker player in the past. She shrugs. I think the Borg just have him riled. Yeah, well, to be fair, you, I don't think he was expecting to come across in an entire new civilization of Borg individuals. No one did. That... No one did. Sorry. 
that's actually something I wanted to bring up. Um, a lot of the Borg, well, a lot of the interlink, I should say, they're trying to remove parts of themselves and stuff like that, but they're only so skilled. If we could get, I don't know, maybe a supply ship with, uh, what, what's the term called? Uh, synthetic limbs and prosthesis sent out here, and specialists that can help with rehabilitations. She pauses. That's an interest. That's an interesting request. Could go quite a long ways back home. I'll see if I can't find a medical ship to assist. We'd Thank be you. very grateful, Admiral. We want to play uh, a part in the politics of the region and help smooth things over. That was part of the reason we held the summit. We. Got to know a lot of our neighbors. Yes, I'm not saying... And I'm saying you did a fantastic job. I'm just trying to push against the... Uh, the fleet admiral's... Wishes with as much... Uh, with as much decorum as I possibly can without ending up with a reprimand myself. So. Well, if it would help you out, I will surely write a letter to the fleet admiral. She just sort of smiles and shakes her head. You're welcome to try. I will hand deliver it myself, Commander. Now, Captain, I believe you have some diplomats to meet. I will be in I will be in my quarters if the need arises. After and I will be uh, meeting with uh, certain I will be meeting with certain staff members and touring the station as per my adjunct's wishes. Of course, and if nobody in the senior staff stops them, um, Crawford's going to go to wherever the Nalu are docking to meet them. Okay. Is anybody going to join him? I would be fascinated to meet with this first species of this new area. Okay. That's Crawford, Sulkin. Who else? Uh, they're the ones with the big old... Uh weapons to keep on them, right? Uh, nope, the those are the Kasala. These are the ones with the uh, giant Myrmidon tridents that can shoot bioelectricity. Yeah, Demos is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go to Ops to be the commanding officer. Okay. I will actually try to get um, Admiral Zier just for an extra few minutes just to be able to talk about um, general resupply of the station and potential extra supplies for the engineer. Okie dokie. No, As you're no, heading no. to ops, um, I'm going to hand you a small vial. Um, it is a, a solvent to remove her butt from her chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's pretty clever. Uh, Jargivim, um, what are you up to? What are you up to? Uh, with, with all due, uh, with all due respect, sir, and she now seems, uh, visibly like, uh, uh, uh breathing, uh, with, 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 with more trouble. I'd like to, uh, unless my presence is needed elsewhere, I like to ask the captain and uh and the admiral to to go back to astrometrix and and reveal some of the uh some of the re requisitions that i had asked before is that all right i don't see a problem with that okay I don't either. Well, that's good because you're the captain. Yeah, you know. Okay. So just we... the man in charge. Yeah, just the man in charge. Okay. So we are going. Not to... that important. <laughs> oh wow! Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, airlock. Okay, so we find ourselves back on the same set. Where? 
you guys uh, arrive just as the uh, airlock doors open to find the familiar and Ambassador Simi Simli. And she is only flanked by one of her large bodyguards this time around. Which is good, because these corridors are kind of narrow. Uh, she slithers through, and uh, the, the giant bodyguard with a large metal trident that sort of flickers electricity uh, sets off a, a security alert within Lieutenant Keel's uh, security station. The bodyguard doesn't seem to care. Hey, you're going to be leaving that behind here this time because it's not a diplomatic visit. The giant bodyguard opens his mouth and begins to hiss slightly threateningly until Ambassador Semley just turns around, her eyes flash very quickly, and he, uh, the bodyguard leans the uh, trident delicately up the uh, wall, up against the wall. You have my word, it'll be treated with utmost respect and care as such as this honorable device is. Okay? She nods. Captain, it is, it is good to see you again. The feeling is mutual to you as well, Ambassador. I have come to request, I have, or, the, Nal, the Nalu, uh, formally request on behalf of a species under our protection for Federation aid. I see, uh, if you don't mind my asking, we'll move to probably somewhere a little more comfortable than an airlock where you can explain to me what's been happening with this species, if. I may inquire. Of course. And just like that, a turbo lift ride away will find you once again in the upstairs of the conference lounge. Where, once again, there's a significant number of people who are no longer here. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this scene. Yep. <laughs> it was a good scene. We all do. <laughs> 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 okay. We should have Keevan play Mei Loon from now on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe. And the bodyguard stands back here. Oh, I'm going to stand next to the bodyguard. Okay. And so does Midas, just because that's what Midas does. <laughs> okay. Now that you are all properly comfortable, uh, the uh, Admiral Semley's tail sort of coils up and leaves a, a viscous, sort of a mucusy substance on the chair. Thankfully, the chairs can clean off easy. I, Captain, I wish to, I wish for your the aid of your Starfleet and your Federation in assisting the Medell with a partic with an odd crisis. Even though they would not acknowledge it as such. I see. Uh, what kind of crisis are they experiencing? Well, Captain, I believe that they're... It is the belief of the Nalu that their oceans are being poisoned. And we... And due to ancient or due to treaties between us and the Medell, in a, in in exchange for us giving them technology to achieve space flight and leave the planet, the Nalu are not permitted to set foot on or to swim in their seas unless invited to do so. We, as such, we cannot interfere directly. However. You are not part of this agreement, and so we believe that you sh could assist. Well, it's interesting that you ask that, but such things... Well, is there a reason to suspect that another species might be poisoning their water? <clears throat> 
as because we're even though we're not allowed to set foot oh sorry that's a such a that's such a bipedal phrase we're not allowed to swim in their skies we do have various uh technologies in place to keep to ensure that their uh, to ensure that their homeworld is not a is not affected by uh, outsiders. Uh, we have state. We have a uh, listening post logs showing so, uh, a pair of ships entering once every uh, three or four uh, three or four days. They seem to eject a sub. They seem to eject a substance into the water, and then launch some shuttles about three or four hours afterwards to the surface. We're not entirely sure what is going on. And the Medel do not wish or are not actively communicating such things. Getting them to admit that they have problems is, it's like, well, it's like trying to pull teeth out of um, Grimthoth back there. It's not easy and you usually end up with, and it's usually more painful than it's worth. Ambassador, you use the term poisoned. Are you sure that is the case? Well, it's if a if a species showed up, dumped a mysterious substance into your oceans, and then immediately decided to to send shuttles to the surface. I don't know what it's. They're probably not doing. Or they're probably not doing uh, well, or they're probably not doing benef. Eh, they're probably not doing beneficial stuff to this to this world. I mean, have I'm not saying I don't want to help Ambassador, but have any Medell been dying because of this? We believe so. They're. Our, uh, we're not allowed to, as I've said, we're not allowed to swim in their seas, but we have some, well, they're, they were, yeah, they were top or state of the art when they were first installed 30 years ago. Now they are outdated, but they still give us enough information. There seems to be massive uh, swaths of ocean losing a significant amount of their life over the last uh, two months. Biodiversity is dropping a, at a significant rate. I see. Hmm. Well, I see no reason to not at least go and investigate it, but I feel like we will need some kind of confirmation from the Medell themselves in order to truly provide aid, if that makes some sort of sense to you, Ambassador. I understand, Captain. If you need... Uh, run whatever tests you'd like. And if you feel... If you wish to reach out to the Medell, please do so. I would prefer it if our involvement in this was kept to a footnote. Of course. Well, I guess we need to start assembling some kind of away team. Yes. And what's the away team going to look like? Um, think I think we're gonna have to be stereotypical here and have Captain stay on the station. Okay. Which means I get to lead it. Ca Captain's been on a, a fair amount of away missions in the past few. Well, the ad sessions. We'll so. say that with the admiral being here, you don't want to leave your post and make you look bad. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm glad you're here, Admiral, but bye. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll lead. Okay, so that is Dolrum. 
And who else wants to be on the away team? Yeah, Demos will go. Okay. I wish to accompany the away team. Dr. Salkin, okay. Um, uh, I'm just a vegetarian junior as I've been uh, as as you as you've been saying again and again. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I'd like to also come, I can help out with, with sensors. Sure. Uh, well, that's, of course, up to the commander, but I don't see why a science officer should not be in attendance. Well, if we have to survey the... Okay. So we have that. Um, who am I missing? Uh, Crawford, who do you want to bring along? Um, I'm going to leave that up to is... Uh, is Keevan going? Or are you bringing a uh, supporting character? I was thinking of bringing support because, I mean, with something like this, I don't think he even necessarily needs to go. Mm -hmm. I mean... Uh, who are you thinking about bringing, just out of curiosity? I think I was figuring I'd run Mud. Mud? Okay. okay. Yeah, why not? Okay. Um, in that case, um... So we have some kind of engineer. Let's bring Nia. Okay. Demos. Demos yes. is going. <laughs> Are you going? Yeah, Demos yes. is going. No, I didn't catch that. Okay. Cool. So we are going to... And now, this is the really important question. What ship are you going to take? Well... well... I don't feel like being crammed into a tiny little runabout <laughs> with so many people. And the Slipnir's bigger than a runabout. Oh, totally. Uh, however, this... however, however, this is kind of a um, God. What's what's the term? Um, not a rescue Diplomatic? mission, but like a humanitarian issue. So, are you volunteering the Apollo? Mm, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Although technically the Apollo is a civilian ship, so it shouldn't be oh, running. Uh, Commander official, Shrine! Official Starfleet sanctioned away missions. Not saying I don't want to go on the Apollo. But okay, it is we... technically a civilian ship. Besides, we can get a lot of people on a good runabout, anyhow. Well, these runabouts are also bigger than the original runabouts. Yeah. They're still sizable. Okay. I don't think any of them are going to have a fun time going in water, though. Ah, the Apollo's know. designed for some tough stuff. Darn. Sucks that we can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying we can't take it. I'm just simply pointing out that it's technically a civilian ship and not supposed to be used for Starfleet away missions. We can take it. I mean, uh, Crawford, your mic is staticky. Yeah, yeah I'm not 100% sure how to fix it at the moment, so... First to talk. Oh, God. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Okay. So, we are going... To, uh, let's see. We are going to cut to the Bridge of the Apollo. Where after much humming and hawing. <laughs> so, uh, for the new players, the Apollo... Demos points to himself and goes, You! <laughs> I don't know why I deleted that, Demos. I, <laughs> I just tilted my head like, what? Um, no, he's, he's going to go to the front of his, of his uh, cockpit. Um, he's just going to look at Mud. He's like, you take navigations. No steering for you. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. And he's going to walk through the view screen, which is a hologram. He's just going to sit down in his own little chair and get everything prepped. For those Hello, yeah. you're, you're here again. 
we we seem to we see we see we seem to bump into each other time and time again. That would be true, Lieutenant. All right, everyone, let's see how, if we can solve the Medell's poison issues, if it is an issue. All right. And with that, we will jump to the sector, and this is going to be a good time to take a quick bio break. So let's be back at a quarter to the hour. So 15 minutes or so, and I will... See you guys shortly. And we are back. Uh, I do want to do one thing before we leave the uh, station. Yes. I just look back at everyone like, you guys all ate, right? Why does that matter? Oh, <laughs> no reason. Just make sure you're strapped in, please. And he's just going to punch it with inertial dampeners at 70%. <laughs> okay, uh, so roll me a... If you're the one flying there, uh, if you could please roll me a daring contest. Um, the, the Apollo can assist with engines plus con. Mm -hmm. And let's just call this a difficulty of one test just to, you know... Actually a difficulty of zero because I have a talent. Ah, and what talent is that? It's either going to be... Do, 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 uh, improved reaction control system or precision maneuvering. Either of those sound perfect. So yeah, just difficulty zero. What am I going to roll for the ship? Uh, engines plus con. And I'm doing control and engineering or daring? You're doing or daring, daring con. plus con. Okay. Well, and there's I... one from the ship. Yeah. And I have a focus. <clears throat> I knew you were gonna oh. do that, Dumos. Okay, so that is well. Hey, that's that that is one. Uh, we actually got three successes, so I'm just going to give you two momentum to buy off that complication. Aw, now, <laughs> now I have actually been reading the rule book, and it is not momentum that buys off a complication; it is threat. So if you oh. want to buy off that complication, you give me two threat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's so three momentum. Three... For you guys, and two threat for me. Which... I just like to imagine when I keep punching it out there, there's one of the other ships that's supposed to be leaving, and he's like, oh, right, I guess I should go down and back up, and then start spinning. <laughs> and so I imagine that a threat is, uh, for us, is a bit better than a complication. Yes. Well, for now. I get... So threat is my... is what I spend to make the story worse for you guys. And I just give him two. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. He also starts with 12. Yeah. So, and I haven't spent any of it yet. Now I'm at 14. Booyah. Anyways. <laughs> uh, as you... So there is a, a small squadron of Slipniers that have just returned from a mission through one of their... Or through one of the transwarp hubs. They will... Uh, move into the shuttle bay only to scatter like geese as the SS Apollo bursts right through them. Uh, for the new players, the Apollo is an area class been redesigned. Uh, it was stripped down. It was cut by a deck uh, for reinforced hull design, specifically for these maneuvers. Um, it has a complete uh, exterior overhaul. And it is Demos' little pride and joy. 
and he doesn't waste any time. The moment he gets clear, he's jumping to QSD just so Darvel can't yell at him. <laughs> oh, Darvel just puts, Darvel a, just puts, no, puts a note on his console. I say something like, uh, um, um, Commander, should I scan them? Or, 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 or just... Or, or just... Uh, oh, we got a couple of hours before we make planet side, thanks to QSD. Feel free to enjoy the single food replicate I have aboard this vessel because I don't think to uh, have guests. And, um, well, if, if we take a long way back, there is only two beds. You guys have to share. I'll take the floor. Much kind of shimmying in the chair and getting comfor comfortable. I just realized I'm missing someone from there. That would be the doctor. Yep, me. Sorry, <laughs> I, your token just didn't copy over right. My bad. There you go. Your uh, doctor. No, oh, I know what I'm doing. Doctor, you're down in the what passes for a sick bay. Um, basically, it is a very basic bio bed because what the no, I'm in the wrong set piece. Uh, it's a very basic bio bed because Demos and Decon have no need for this whole medicine stuff. <laughs> but now, at the sudden acceleration, you figure it's probably time to come to the bridge. I'll, I'll turn back the inertial damage to to a hundred percent. Like there you go. Okay, and with the passing of time, you would uh, pop out at this planet or the solar system of Medel. So there are. So Medel is a, a class O planet, which is an ocean planet. Uh, there are four, so it is, ah, let me start at the start. The solar system is a single star, a class M red giant. There are four planets. Um, there is a class N reducing, which is one that is very similar to Venus. There is uh, Medel, which is a class O, its official title is uh, pelagic, but mostly known as an ocean world. As you get further out, there is a planet known as Class Q, which is a variable atmosphere. It has, as um, Jargavim would be quick to note, its orbit is very, uh, it is where most of them, f uh, where the planets, for the most part, follow a single uh, uh, orbit on a single axis, or nope, not axis, a plane. Uh, the Class Q orbits roughly 85 degrees in ca uh, counter to that uh, plane. And finally, at the very edge, which has hoarded up a significant amount of the uh, stellar debris at the edge of most solar systems, is a Class I gas supergiant. Uh, the planet Medel has three moons. Uh, they're all rocky, and they have no life. And I'm just going to put what I said into the Discord chat so you can reference it, or, you know, meme over it as you do. So, as far as I understand, the um, these ships show up, they launch a couple of things at the planet here, and then they send on shuttles down. Is that about right, Commander? That's the gist that I got from the briefing that we had. They show up, launch something down into the oceans, and then almost as soon as they got there, they leave. But uh, there has been reports of decreased biodiversity and acidification in the oceans. Hmm. Uh, do we have coordinates of where they're sending this stuff to? Is it the same, or is it always changing? That information I was not given. I suggest we do a planetary scan. Okay. Uh, so this is going... Uh, so this is either going to be a... So 
let's see what you're going to look for, because I'll tell different things to whoever's doing the scanning. If the doctor scans, I will obviously give them slightly more medicinal style of information. Or if the uh, science officer scans, I will, of course, talk more science ease. Can they start uh, with me? Yes. Because you brought me up me first. Hang on. <laughs> um, everyone started talking first. Uh, Jargivim, what were you saying? No, I just would say that I would do, I would do a, uh, a a sort of sweep of uh, of the planet and see if I can find anything okay. uh, anything weird that, that that leads to that point. Okay, so let's do a sweep of the planet. So, if you could please roll me uh, an insight science roll. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two which means you need to roll two successes in, in order to succeed it. Uh, the ship will can assist with uh, sensors plus science. I got the ship. Okay. And if you have focuses along the lines of uh, sensor operations or um, atmospheric scans... You can also buy extra dice with momentum. Yeah. You should probably tell them about that. Yep. Um, and if you wish to spend one momentum, you will get a third dice that you can roll. If you want to spend two momentum after that, you can get a fourth dice. And three momentum after that would get you a fifth. Or uh, more. give me more threat for more dice. Either more dice. More. So I don't. So if I don't have anything like that, it's just two uh, d twenty. Two d twenty, and then you would select no focus. Okay. So, um, you have like a sensors operations focus. I'm gonna, he does not. I'm does gonna, not. So I'm gonna do this uh, this uh, like, uh, this standard to to the to to the. That is correct. Yep, and so no focuses from that. So you get two successes. So three successes from the Apollo. Excellent. So you get one more momentum. Yeah. Um, and as far as I can, I, I, I read, uh, I can use momentum to ask uh, an information from from Correct. Here. So yeah. I will tell you stuff first. And because you're a science because officer, you're a science you get one free question. And then you can spend momentum for more questions. So, so, uh, so okay. the planet of Medel um, is fairly has a fairly high saline content, and um, the continents that you see in the picture are actually large floating clumps of uh, seaweed or uh, other flora that are floating along the surface and have clumped together so large that they've become self-sustaining ecosystems. Uh, there are no land masses at the surface. And indeed, there's only about... You only see seven static structures uh, that appear... Or sev seven artificial structures that exist below the uh, planet's uh, watery surface. They appear to be used for starship construction or communications of the like. Um, there's very little in the way of... Um, cities or other structures like that that you, that you can see. From your scans, you are detecting ion trails of uh, war, of, speech, of some ship. Uh, judging from its decay, it appears to be about f uh, four days old. And it comes uh, and it leaves out system. So you'd have to send a probe or do some stellar cartography stuff to figure out where it goes. And now you get one free question you can ask me. Okay, my question is, uh, if someone, uh, if one of those structures are uh, sending some, uh, 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 are, sending, are sending some signal to, uh, to, uh, to somewhere, okay. or, or, or they are, uh, you know, not sending anything. 
Uh, most of the commun whatever communications systems you see don't appear to be uh, leaving the planet surface. There is one uh, sub there is one structure be beneath the surface that is tr um, it's not a constant stream of information, just um, intermittent signals. Uh, it appears that the signals are directed back to the Nalu space, which is which shares a border to the Medel uh, planets. Okay, so I share all of these informations with the uh, with the with the commander, and, uh, and I asked him if he wanted me to send a probe or something, uh, which which would lead to that and uh, to that ion trail. I look over to Demos. Demos, did you remember to put probes in this thing? Oh, we got probes, sure. Weapons, on the other hand. Yeah, no. we'll we'll have to get. It'll be interesting dealing with that. But let's send a probe after the ion trail. I also want uh, doc the doctor to see if you can run a uh, metallurgic, not metallurgic, medicinal scan of the oceans to see if it, if the biosphere seems to be off. Yes, Commander. Okay. Uh, so insight medicine test from you and the sh and the ship will assist with sensors plus medicine and this is going to be again a difficulty of well you know what you have a lot of momentum so i'm going to spend some threat to increase the difficulty to three that ship did nothing i say buy two dice buy two i mean we have five momentum okay it's a difficulty three. I'll take it. I mean, that's that's what I say. What are the other people saying? Yeah, I'm good for I'm it. I'm fine yeah, with it. Sure. Do it. Okay, let's see what those dice say. Well, we succeeded. Yeah. Yes, you did. And there's a complication. Fantastic. Please say you have cautious medicine. Please say you have cautious medicine. No. No. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, the information that you receive from the planet is tr troublesome. There is... Um, I have no idea what sort of chemicals go into a healthy ocean, but you see them in abundance. There is a fairly rich and diverse amount of uh, of life at the ocean surface as far as your uh, systems can penetrate and someone's phone is playing I need a hero which is <laughs> awesome so um, the uh, where was I right uh, what you do find um, is traces of um, a, a significant amount of uh, what's the phrase Anesthe anesthetic, yeah, anesthetics that have so they are being drugged um, that yeah. have trace amounts at this stage um, <coughs> lingering in uh, a portion of the ocean in the northern hemisphere. It appears uh, in this in this area of the northern hemisphere there is no uh, artificial structures, and because you got the complication they they appear early uh, so Demos and mud your proximity sensors go off very quickly as a scale four sort of bulk ship enters at the system exterior or at the edge of the system just by the gas giant it begins making its way in in system not speedily but definitely at a steady pace commander we have an incoming presence um a large cargo vessel 
Uh, have they picked us up? Would we know that? Like, are they, are they at an extreme range? I'd say they're at extreme range right now. Cool. Demo's just, he's just going to float the, uh, the Apollo down close to the atmosphere and kill all engines. We're like, and hey, we're going dark. Okay. Try to keep sensors operational and see if we can track the ship. Mm -hmm. well, we'll do what we can, but um, if we get into a fight, we don't have any weapons. If we get into a fight, we have an entire ocean to dive into. <laughs> yeah, you know that was just a practicing theory about the Apollo, right? There's no better time to play commanders. If I may, Commanders, uh, we could uh, use some sort of passive sensors. So we can just, you know, um, uh, receive or, or collect the, the, uh, the, uh, the elect electromagnetic uh, uh, lights that those ships are emitting, and I can analyze them in a few minutes. Put us into passive mode. If we need to, Demos, there's no better time to test a theory than the present. If you scratch my paint. If we land in an ocean, I think we're going to scratch more than just the paint. Well, that's a shame. I don't have a water icon, so we'll just use the Flaming Comet, because that works well. Okay. So, as you descend into the ocean, you realize that in the wake of the large ship is two other escorts. Because GM spent threat and brought them in. Ha! <laughs> okay, so, um, roll... So, as you descend it to the ocean surface... <clears throat> uh... You find that... Oh, first you have to go through Atmo. <laughs> yes, you do. You have to get through Atmo. And you're, uh, I think your ship's equipped for it, so I'm not really going to roll for it. But you are hampered by the extreme magnetosphere uh, surrounding the planet. Otherwise, the solar winds from a red giant would have blown the water away years ago. <clears throat> the... So, uh, if uh, science officer, uh, Jagram, or Jag, I'm just going to call you Jag. If you could please roll me another insight science, uh, difficulty of two, because the atmosphere is interfering, and the ship will assist with sensors plus science, just to see if you're able to figure out what these, or where these ships are going. Ship is on fire tonight. Well, Figuratively, not literally. Well, <laughs> passing through the atmosphere. Through the atmosphere. Okay, so it should be my science. Yep. Right. That's right. That's right. Just like. Per choice of words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Okay, and the dice say. If you have something like sensor and, sensor. and the attributes from the ship. Uh, yeah, there's, the ship's already uh, rolled, yeah. so the ship's giving you one. One success already. <coughs> so I, I roll one, one D20. Uh, you roll nope, two, D20. two D20 unless you want to buy an extra one for, with momentum. Um, since you already use some, some, some threats, I'm going to... I'm going to spend one more dice okay. and roll three. Cool. <clears throat> and there's there's two more successes, so you get that momentum right back. Nice. Okay. So the Apollo's doing well, despite the fact it's in atmosphere. It is able to pick up that this freighter craft is heading towards the, uh, the southern hemisphere. And it appears to be aiming for a fairly large kelp or various 
sea fauna or sea flora uh, bed with its um, ah, with its cargo. It is go as the uh, two uh, small ships wait in orbit. It begins to descend into atmosphere as well. And unless you do anything to stop it, it is very shortly going to dump uh, several tons worth of a liquid that uh, Dr. Salkin immediately recognizes as a veterinary grade anesthetic that could put a horse to sleep in a sizable enough dose. And they're basically using it to put part of the ocean to sleep. Yeah, I like to imagine that like we break Atmo, go down, and then they're like, and we're just diving into water now. Okay. Shallow depth, but enough to uh, stay hidden at least. Okay. Now let's see like... what... Because the freighter is busy, let's see what the two other escorts are doing. Hey, Commander. Yes, Deimos? I have a wonderful, horrible idea. What is your wonderfully horrible idea? Oh, class 9 probe is roughly the size, about nine feet long ish if uh, you pull out all the components and leave in minimal life support you can hold a person oh no this ship is uh picking up stuff maybe a stowaway with a machine gun you're volunteering well unless you can make a machine gun out of nothing yes I'll um, bring one of those fancy little, uh, what do you call it, uh, transporter, uh, transponders, boosters, well, you know those little things. Emergency transponder. Yeah. That way there, I don't have to put the Apollo in danger, just my handsome self. You do know the amount of paperwork I'm going to have to go through when we get back to Cerberus. That's if there's any ship left. <laughs> That's just a joke. i rather have the, to deal with the paperwork of you doing this. Oh, this is now, what, the second time I've had to deal with a stowaway situation? Of our officers stowing away on other things? Oh, who did the first time? I thought it was original. That would be uh, Ensign Errol, sir. No, not even the one I was thinking of. No. Or all stowed away on Deep Space 15. Galen's stuck aboard the... Oh, the that's right. Uh, our previous chief medical officer. Hmm. Uh, what we'll say, though, is I'll take a couple of science tricorders with me. And if they, uh, you know, wonder why I stowed away, like, oh, I was simply studying the fish life and you scooped me up. You were in a probe out doing research run to see if you could pick up any of the toxins that seemed to be there. And you just happened to get picked up and it turned into a rescue mission. Got it. Oh, I was going to say I was a whale suppository, but that works too. <laughs> I'm sorry, a suppository, Lieutenant you, Commander? You don't want to know, Nia. <laughs> Conversations for not at the dinner table. No. Dr. Sulkin, what are what are suppositories? <laughs> I'm going to need a hand pulling this probe apart as quickly as possible. So, Nia, come on. Okay. Mud, you can fly. But if you do anything to hurt this ship, <laughs> and he'll get it like in really close, it's like hurting my child. I am a uh, Starfleet. Excuse me, Commander. I'm a Starfleet Star pilot. I can take care of this. Don't worry. I'll keep your baby intact. Hold me to it. Excuse me, Commanders, if I may. Mm. 
should if, if we are going to mostly do a, a surveillance or survey mission, should I be the one who goes? I am the let's say expensive member here, and uh, it should be logical. Logic um, to a certain extent. You also can't survive well in a pod like that. Oh, I haven't realized it. Uh, how uh, efficient uh, a Demos can be. I mean, sorry, Lieutenant Commander Demos. The main premise is this ship has no weapons. If I get aboard that and they are hostile, self defense. You have a weapon. Yes, me. Well, I ha we'll have a lot of explaining to do to the Admiral and the Captain when we get back. But go ahead and do it. We need to get to the bottom of this. And if they, we are currently watching them pollute the waters, well, we got to take care of it. And if the Admiral wants to get mad at me, we can just say we need a ship. So, you know, ammo for her. Yeah, I don't come think on. she'll quite see that, but yes, go. Oh. Okay, Commander. <laughs> McCall just like, <laughs> yeah, that's me. Uh, I think that's back in the it's like we give you all the information, all the things you need to make it go south. <laughs> well, it's it's a good thing that he spent all of his threat to summon those ships. Oh, I have so much more. I was gonna oh, say it was not no. all of it. And a certain someone in this crew is probably going to give him more for rolls. I didn't say for the beans yet. There's that word, yet. I like beans. Especially the jelly beans. variety. <laughs> <laughs> Not where I was going with that. Okay. Heinz for me. Okay, so modifying the probe. That is... Um, actually, you know, do I want to do this extended task? No, I don't. Okay. Oh, Okay, so <laughs> modifying the probe is going to take a, um, because you're doing it in sort of a slapdash fashion, this is going to be a daring plus science or a daring plus engineering role. And one person can assist with control science or control engineering. And the difficulty here is going to be a three because you want it functional after you finish tearing it apart. Emergency repairs is a focus I have. I don't think that applies. No. I have advisor. But you have to assist yeah, with command, though. Do I? Yeah, advisor, you have to assist, assist with command. Mm. Okay. Uh, so, daring engineering, I'm looking at a 15. I am also looking at a 15. Uh, Jar, what do you got for daring plus science? Uh, just a um, so science, I have four, and daring, I have an eight. Okay, so that is a twelve. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that'd be a probably Demos role then. Yeah, and then you said the assist could be control engineering? Uh, nope, still daring engineering or daring okay. science. Uh, I'll have Nia assist. Alright. Alright. And I will spend a momentum for an extra day. And no to the emergency repairs focus? Uh, what does emergency repairs do? Oh, that's just a focus. Oh, it's a focus. Um, yeah. No, not in this instance. Yeah, that's it, more of a jury rig. Yeah. Can, can I make an argument for experimental technology as a focus? <laughs> 
All of the Apollo is experimental technology. Yeah, but the probes are not. The probes That's are true. proven yeah. scientific tricorders with a warp drive attached to them. Don't, no, don't need it. But I'm we're good. also yeah, but so, we're also yeah. attempting to turn a probe into a boat. Yeah, <laughs> so, a submarine, not a boat. A submarine. The the Slayer has slain the probe. He's got the three successes you need. Now Nia got one more. So one momentum for you guys. Booyah! So we're still at two then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's just pulling out like okay, transducer, coupler, sensor. Don't need that. So I should also Container. roll roll for something. Uh nope. Here. We were just comparing who would get the best one. Ah, yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, so between the two of you, you managed to tear out everything that the probe needed to actually do science and replace it with everything that the probe needed to get on or get from A to B while keeping Demos alive. So let's have a mud roll a uh, control plus con, please. Daring or difficulty of two to navigate underwater to get you close enough to the uh, to the freighter and that's actually going to be a difficulty one because the ship oh yes I suppose it does count as a extreme environment doesn't it yep. and would this be precision flight control as well I yeah that would work focus there's your focus man and it's also an activation if you wanted to. And there's one. That's the one you need. Uh, ship can assist with engines con. I'm sorry, I probably forgot to mention that. Engines con always has a focus. E. Okay, so that's one more momentum. You might need it. Okay, so you get yourself in position and you are ready to launch the probe. Uh, Demos, is there anything you wish to say before entering the probe and sealing your body in what might be a uh, watery casket? Is that some water leaking and he's just going to launch the, <laughs> he's gonna launch the probe? <laughs> okay. Uh, just because I want to keep the new guys involved as much as possible, uh, if uh, Jar, you could roll me a control plus science test, please. Just to see how well the probe launch goes. And this is going to be a difficulty of two because it's underwater. Um, so um, the ship uh, the ship won't assist in this case. It's just you. So you roll, oh, two, I see. roll two d twenty. And if you have anything like probe operations or stuff like that, that would be a good focus. You can also buy a third dice if you feel the need to. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry if you, if you can say that again. Uh, so you can uh, spend so a third, or you can spend a moment to grab a third dice. Maybe, maybe which, which, uh, which attribute and which discipline? Um, that, oh, sorry, that would be control plus science. Control plus science. So I just uh, gonna run two d twenty. Mm -hmm. Two d twenty, that's right. And that's the two successes you need. Nice. Yeah, uh, Demos. The wait seems far longer than it really should, but you are expelled from the Apollo with the force of a probe launch. Your it is not a it is not an easy ride, but your uh, your body's built for such things. It's just in a black coffin. He's like, well, either this works or they're going to pick me up in a couple of hours. Yeah. I forgot to mention that the ocean's about 5,000 meters deep, uh, which is about oh. 17,000 feet, I think. Yeah, it's a ways. Um, so it would be a fairly long drop. Anyways, uh, you are in luck. Uh, you are so now that you're closer. You the SS Apollo does not need sensors to determine what's going on. Uh, you see that they are uh, now that the anesthetic has been sufficiently dispersed. 
Um, nearby, Medel life signs enter a dormant state, as well as a lot of the other fish and uh, sea creatures. <clears throat> and several small shuttles depart from the freighter. And they perform, um, well, they do large, wa ah, wide, uh, a wide beam tractor pull of all the objects inside such beams. And, as luck would have it, one of them happens to grab Deimos's pod. So, Deimos, just as you begin, or just as you lose forward momentum and begin to start sinking at a decent rate, uh, you feel the pod's momentum halt suddenly and begin to rise. And it is not long until you are or your pod, along with several other life forms in all and the water surrounding them, are brought on board small shuttles. The small shuttles and their mm, tankerous insides then all re retreat back to the carrier, and the carrier begins to slowly rise up. All in all, the process takes about two hours or so to complete. And it's very odd that Despite all of this happening, the Medel do not seem to respond. <clears throat> okay, well, I'm just going to wait till my tricorder records an atmosphere outside that's breathable. Okay. Oh my god, his dad isn't he? I should have the one to go. Oh, he'll be fine. So, are we going to be following that big carrier-looking thing, Commander? I look over to Nia. Well, we have to get our crew member back. With no weapons on this ship? Okay. If all else fails, we'll just start firing probes. They'll blow up eventually. <laughs> Well, the <laughs> type lines do have a little tiny warp core, so I, antimatter explosion. We also, we, to go on away mission. we also can run them over if needed. Uh, uh, Jargavan, look at our ship, and then look, and then and look at that one. I'm not a hundred percent sure we'd be able to beat that. Scale 3 versus scale 4, it's fine. Do we have any idea yeah, right. what these ships are? Uh, sorry, what was that? Do we have any records of what these ships are? Uh, no, these ships are alien to the Federation databases. Before we start to ascend, I want to try to send out a communication to the, uh, Medell. Okay. Um, you, uh, bad, bad. you do send a communication and you receive a response uh, from one of them. Uh, as soon as I pull up my Medell tokens. Thank you for... This is the communication station for the Medell. This is uh, External Diplomat Sirius 12. Please. How may we be of assistance? Well, actually, I think it's more how we can be an assistance of you to you. Uh, are you aware that you seem to be having poison dropped into your waters? Yes, we are aware of such things. We were hope it was the um, Grand Originator's plan, or the Originator's Council plan, that they would stop after a period of time. That passiveness was the way to go forward. Alas, this does not seem to be the case, and the originators will need to reevaluate the situation. How long has this been happening? It has been happening for, uh, let's see, how long has it? It has been going on for the past, uh, and he rattles off a period of time equivalent to about um, eight 
uh, ah, eight standard weeks. Well, we were picking up the vessels on the server station's long race, long, long range sensors, um, and wanted to come and make sure everything is all right. Do you wish us to pursue and find the source? The originators have yet to emerge from council. However, as I am currently speaking for our departed brethren, please we rec please do what you are able to do to assist. All right. You have our communication codes for this vessel on file. Should you need to reach out, we will uh, start pursuing the vessels. Understandable. We wish you well. Same to you. We cut communications. I turn to Mud. Let's see how well this thing can get out of the atmosphere. Yes, Commander. Okay. And then I turn to Nia. Nia, send a communication back to Cerberus Station saying that we are in pursuit of the culprits who seem to be uh, farming the Medell. On it. Leave out the part about Demos. I, I'll, I'll take the reprimand later. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, are... sir. We are going to cut to the internal cavern of the uh, ship, which is uh, actually more like an aquarium, but I really couldn't find a good space aquarium to use. So, this is what we have. Just imagine this, but wet. So, the blackness of your pod, Demos, opens, and you find yourself face-to-face -face with a pair of these individuals. So, they are roughly humanoid in shape. Um, they are, although their upper body gives them more of a snake-like appearance. Um, their head, uh, neck, and torso appear to bend and move similar to that of a snake's, except vertical and upright. They have two arms and two legs, and ending in sort of a, it's not quite a hoof, but it's hoof-shaped, with two long toes, and each hand is three long digits, so two fingers and one large, long thumb. They appear to be quite surprised to have pulled a uh, probe out of the water, and even more surprised to find a robot person inside of it. <laughs> are they armed? They are not armed. Um, they they are not armed. No. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna say in the most robotic way possible: Klaatu, Verata, Nictu, beep, <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> And he's just, his eyes, all of his lights are slowly going to get brighter. Like he's about to explode. Okay. Uh, there is a brief moment of panic as they realize it, whatever it is, begins to get sentient. Uh, they start calling over the... Uh, they start hissing. Uh, long forked tongues and a mouth begin moving. And your built-in universal translators eventually picks up enough. Yeah, they're calling for armed support. At which point, three more guards burst in. These ones actually have weapons, and they are trained on you. I was hoping they would run away thinking it was a bomb. <laughs> Alright, well, he'll stop that. He's like, oh, hi, sir. It's just coming back online. Hello. What are you? Says this one yeah. in the center. Who seems to bear a rank, what you believe to be rank insignia might, because it's different, he's either the leader or the, or the uh, poor grunt pushed out in front. Not entirely sure yet. I am a science probe. I was deployed to examine the aquatic life. A science probe? From where? 
I believe the ship I was launched from, a science submarine. That causes them some pause as they begin to quickly talk amongst themselves. That, okay. If there is a scientific submarine operation in this area, what species or nation or state are you with? I am a probe. Okay. Do you this... think I have answers? At this point, roll. Uh, roll me. Insight plus com. No, not insight. Presence plus command to continue the bluff. <laughs> That's a. <laughs> oh my god! That's an eight. Well, this will be. Uh... Uh, let's see. <laughs> what, what's the difficulty? <laughs> uh, it's an opposed test. Uh, you need to beat two successes. <laughs> okay. Um, I got... Could I, could, could I argue intruder protocol because I have dealt with people pulling shit like this in some form or another. <laughs> so I've had some... That's a stretch, dealings. but I'll allow it. Yes. Oh, all for one. Woo! <laughs> well. Okay. Oh my god. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, the commander says, you seem far too complex and us... You seem far too complex and intelligent to be a simple probe. You have weapons pointing at me, so... Yes, we do. Deactivate him. And they begin firing. Oh, okay, well... Mm -hmm. so I guess that they, sucks. <laughs> they have uh, weapons armed and trained first, so they get first action. First one shoots. Uh, they needed two to hit you. They do not get it. So... That's one guy down. Your turn. Oh, do, 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 do. do you have a type 2? Oh. Uh, I probably have a type 1 on me. But what I'm going to do is... I'm going to be nice to them. I'm just going to put them all to sleep as best as I can. Um, I'm going to just rush up to the first one, the commander. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to hit him as hard as I can. Cool. Okay. Opposing uh, daring plus fit, daring plus security rolls. And just because I think it'd be funny, I'm gonna use uh, determination. Okay. Now, what value oh. are you tapping for your determination? Have a multi-purpose tool. <laughs> Use me. Use me, senpai. I'm not entirely sure that would fit well here. We are using him as a probe. Yeah, but now he's a probe with fists. <laughs> he uh, is conducting tactile uh, analysis of these species' okay. uh, exterior makeup. Okay. <laughs> I need some hip waiters. This is getting deep, y'all. <laughs> okay. Uh, you you spend your determination. He and crab a focus. Mm -hmm. That's three successes. And that's a complication from him. So, yeah. So roll me a challenge. Roll me a challenge dice equal to your unarmed strike. And because you got a complication, add another two. Ooh, that's gonna be eight. <laughs> oh Jesus, Demos, don't kill him. Uh, I don't have mean right hook. Uh, Klein flashback initiate. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Uh, you punch him, and what is what you find interesting is that just due to how his body is made up, the skeletal or the muscular skeletal stru structure of them. Uh, bend and adapt fairly 
or absorb the blow and distribute it or distribute the uh, effects of the blow rather well but that's still not enough uh, he goes he goes nighty night <laughs> I just look at the rest of them like now do you want a science probe to talk to or an assault probe Yeah. He's asleep now. Well, that's the two successes he needs. So, uh, let's roll some challenge dice here for their shock weapon. Uh, let's see what boss I give him. I give him that one. Well, that's not terrible. Uh, that's a disruptor pistol, which I believe had vicious. I will check that. I believe had vicious one. <clears throat> Disruptor pistol. Yeah, vicious one. So that is five points of damage or five points of stress. And mm -hmm. I'm going to spend some threat, a threat, to reroll those zeros. <laughs> okay, that's uh, six seven. Seven points of stress to you, Demos. Okay. I will do the uh, thing with fitness. Okay, to avoid injury? Yeah. Okay, I'm. let's double check what that is. And that's around here somewhere, I think. An attack. I never remember what the avoid injury test is. Probably because I haven't had to shoot people in a while. <laughs> I'm glad I can help you have that scratch a little itch. Yeah. Common tasks. Avoid injury. Ah, uh, let's see. Okay, so roll me a fitness plus security, and I believe it is a difficulty of two. It's not on my GM screen. Um, I'm just going to rule it as a difficulty two at the moment. In the means of keeping this going. Okay. Just double checking something here. Yep. Page 176. Okay. Oh, yeah. I do have those with me. Yay. Okay. Uh, fitness security. And don't have a focus. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you avoid the injury, and you get one momentum out of the deal. Sweet. Well, just because I want to get... Uh, let's see. What's nicer, guys? <laughs> phaser? Yeah, phaser is nicer. Uh, so I'll pull out my Type 1, and I can set that with a minor to be an area, correct? I believe it is a minor action to do so, yes. Excellent. And... I want to double check because... Uh, normally I keep a Type 2 on me, but because the Type 1 is able to be concealed, I don't know if the damage is different. Um, I think I'm Type just... 1 is one less. Let me double check. I have my screen up. Yep, yeah, it's one less. Yeah. So, that for that. And yeah, so that is Control Security. Control security, that's right. Difficulty two. I'll spend that momentum to have a three dice. Okay. And yeah, minor to make it area. Very well. And yeah. <gasps> well, that's still enough. And then seven challenge dice. That would be about right. Although, no, you have a security of five, and it's a one? No, it's a two. Never mind. Okay, eight. Do you have not have, like, cautious security? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, what am I cautious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Has anything about Demos screamed cautious to you? He's big metal man. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's also a, it was a nineteen. How is that a complication? Oh yeah, what? Why is that? Well, that's a good question. Uh, oh, it's a holdover from when I used um, uh, what we had the station combat. Oh right, yeah, you should probably yeah. change that back. Oh, I did. Now I got to, now I'm disappointed. I had plans for that complication. <laughs> oh well, I'm okay with this. I'm, I'm okay. I'm I'm happy. I looked. You know what? I'm going to. One of my goals this season is to try to spend threat better. Um, I'm going to spend two threats to add a complication, uh, meaning that the two individuals that were unarmed, as soon as the firing broke out, they scrambled to the back wall, and one of them managed to come the bridge. And yeah, your previous complication before when you were rolling against the eight and the two mm-hmm. it was you still got a zero but it wasn't a complication it was an 18 yeah oh dang okay oh, well, well yep. what, too late now yeah so one of them ma- manages to communicate with the bridge that there is a, a security pr- that there is a security uh breach and yeah. i'm going to spend two more threat to force an end to the scene because I can. Uh, where Demos, just as these guys get knocked unconscious with a phaser, uh, two more uh, individuals show up at the top of the stairs into the, and they toss some form of energy grenades down. Uh, they blow up, and you go offline. And now we are going to cut ourselves back to the folks following. Which is somewhere around here. So for healing wise, since it's a scene change and it wasn't uh, lethal, I'm back to full health. Um, that's a good question. I don't know how that works between scenes. Uh, if you wouldn't mind doing a quick bit of research on that front while I run the next scene, I'd appreciate that. Yeah. Um, you might still need a first aid check or something. Anyways, um, where are we? We are running on the Apollo. So, uh, the Apollo um, follow, breaks atmosphere and notices the freighter and the two other escort ships jump to warp. Mud, keep an eye on them. Yes, Commander. At which point, uh, Decon um, speaks up from the communications console. Uh, whichever one of you organics is now apparently in charge, if we don't get Demos back, do I? Can I have his ship? No. So disappointing. Sorry to burst your bubble. I had no bubble. Oh, we left all the bubbles down there on the planet. Dolorum face palms. Decon has a point, Commander. What do you mean? We did leave the bubbles down on the planet. You are not helping. <laughs> Mud's just kind of looking and just kind of smirking. Uh, at this point, um, uh, uh, you, but well, if you actually, uh, you actually, if you're actually seeing, uh, Jar, Jargon, you notice that he, he was in the same state that, that, that he was before in stress and, and, uh, and, you know, not being himself. And he, he asks to, to go see, uh, to go see Dr. Sokin. He's standing on the bridge, so. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 I thought that he was he was he was down in the in the in the infirmary. I'm sorry. And so, I call up the doctor to come near me, and so that just he cannot can so just so just he uh, can um, I, I can can you see. 
Uh, so you're looking just to have a quiet chat with the doctor? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it's probably best that you and he take the turbo lift and just go below decks. So, the turbo lift down. Yeah, so because this is a personal craft, there's no other crewmen on board to overhear your conversations. So, have a chat. Um, I'm not sure if you have something else in mind, McCall. Uh, if you if you if you want to to leave that for later, or I don't know, or have or have this talk now, it'll be it'll be brief. I'm well right now. It's let's uh, have the chat now while the command crew on the bridge are figuring out what they're going to do. So, so go for it. All right. Um. So, Doctor. Um, do you uh, follow the, the principle that uh, a doctor and another patient has some sort of confidentiality, right? Correct. Um, I am not feeling very well, and uh, uh, that's because uh, I'm I'm trying. Uh, I am. Uh, I, I, I can't control anymore this, these uh, these emotions that has been going here in the in this uh, in this bridge. Uh, the, the more stressful the situation becomes, the more I can't uh, not listen to, to those emotions. You know what I mean? I used to. And. Um, Usually, I was able to to practice my uh, meditation to help me with that because uh, I know I don't believe in telepathy or empathy or something, and I and, and I don't need them. So I I, I tend to block them off. Um, do you have anything that can help me with that? Possibly. I can come up with a concoction to numb, but it seems that you need more of a meditation to control your emotions, and I am assuming a Vulcan side? Uh, yes, but I'm not sure if, uh, if this is the the right time and the right place. I don't know. I agree. I do not think this would be the most appropriate time. But I can teach you meditation techniques to help control this. But for now, I'll fumble around in my med kit and give him like an injection to calm him. Okay. All right. Thank you very, very much. Okay, that's it. Okay. And you pull back, you, the, and the t two of you come back on the bridge just as Commander Dolrum begins to lay out his most awesome plan for following these interloping species, rescuing Commander Demos, and doing it all while looking damn fine. So take it away, Commander Dolrum. Oh, he's been haunted by Bernie Jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mud, yeah. follow the ship. Keep at the edge of their sens sensor range. But... We have to follow them. We can't cloak. So, we gotta be careful. Also, I might suggest that we take off the Starfleet badges. This is a civilian ship. If we get hailed, we could kind of fumble around that. Oh, we're just civilians. I just smile. Okay. Uh, so if if uh, Mr. Mud could please roll me a control plus con test, please. Uh, this control is going to be a difficulty of hmm, just a difficulty of two. So just try to skirt their sensors, but while maintaining track. Ooh, uh... I would like to recommend also, Commander to replicate civilian uniforms instead of looking down. <laughs> Just the comm badges are not going to 
cut it. <laughs> well, I'm hoping to bank on the fact that they don't know what Starfleet or the Federation is or are. I haven't been here long, but uh, it seems that we've made quite a presence in this area. <laughs> Only to certain species. This is a species that their ships did not come up on our uh, records, so most likely they have never had any contact with us. Agreeable. Okay. So, uh, uh, McCall, could I could I use either precision flight control or stealth maneuvers for this skirting maneuver? Either of those sound perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Oh yeah. Very nice. I believe that's uh, one momentum for you. Which is good, because we're... Unless anyone has anything else we're going to do, we're going to have a scene change. So okay. you're going to lose that one momentum. Now, the... Uh, assuming you're you're going to maintain a casual... Or flying distant, the trip is actually going to... Uh, the trip at warp 8 will take several days uh, three days by uh, my rough estimates of the map and where you're traveling from and where you're traveling to <clears throat> does anybody have anything they wish to do for those three days I count electric sheep yes, <laughs> yes. I have yes you do I have been with uh, with our doctor, and we are both uh, uh, we are both uh, practicing uh, uh, meditation. uh, med 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 meditations for 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 me to help with my my emotions, well, your emotions. Uh, the curse of being half beta Z. Okay, so. I imagine that I've gotten a communication from Cerberus and people are not so pleased. Yeah, so well, let's figure that out. Um, so Captain Crawford, with the Admiral breathing down your neck, what, uh, so let's refresh memory. What, Dol Dolrum, what did the message say? It was just a message of we've uh, found a species who are intentionally poisoning the waters of Medell, we are in the pursuit to uh, conduct scans of the species. Okay. And Captain Crawford, what is your response? Whew. Um, that's a damn good question. Um,. I mean, by when I told Ambassador Semley we were going to render aid, I wasn't necessarily thinking, you know, following the species that was poisoning them and, you know, that kind of stuff. I was thinking maybe make some kind of antitoxin slash vaccine thing. Um, <laughs> to be fair. I wouldn't say this is necessarily poisoning them. It's farming them. Yeah. Um. Since, since the Admiral's here, can I talk with the Admiral briefly about it? Absolutely. Cool. <laughs> okay. Let's um, have a quick scene with the Captain and the Admiral in the Captain's office. Captain's office. I should also point out that we have not told. I did not include in that transmission that the uh, demo Demos stuff. I know. Yeah. Currently, not on board. Oh, I mean, if he finds out about that, Crawford's probably going to be pretty pissed. But <laughs> we'll we'll get to that when we get there. Yep. Admiral Zier walks in your office and has a glass of um, iced tea iced tea and it's not iced in the way that it's you know sweetened the way that americans you know it's literally tea with ice in it because 
that Zandorians for you. Yeah. Uh, so, so, Captain, what is it? Um, so, a summary. Ah, Captain, bring me up to speed, please, on what uh, Commander Dalrum was asking. So, the long story short was the Nalu needed assistance with. Apparently, another species was poisoning or some kind of, you know, in a way, drugging the water that the Medell lived in. And they apparently found the species that was, from what I'm able to read, drug them so they could farm the Medell. She puts and, the tea down at that. And... They are currently in pursuit of this species in the Apollo. So they are pursuing a, an unknown and potentially hostile species, or at least a species with either ambivalent or hostile intent, in a non-Federation starship with no weapon systems, if I read up on the Apollo correctly. Is that accurate? That would be accurate, uh, accurate, Admiral, yes. If you ask me, we need to bring them the hell home before we possibly start a war with an unknown species. I'm in agreement with that, Captain. Yeah. Send a signal back to the Apollo. Order your commander back. Hopefully your commanders follow them far enough that they can get a read on their destination. We can pass it off to the Nalu, and we can work on some form of antitoxin or another means of protecting the Medell within their environment, as the uh, as the Nalu have requested. Of course, Admiral. And uh, yeah, he'll send a signal back to the Apollo, telling them to. Uh, order. It's not going to be an ask. It's going to be an order to come back to Cerberus Station. All right. Dolorum will answer the communication. This is the Apollo. Dolorum? It suddenly gets staticky and communication cuts off. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm spending I would spend threat to make sure that these lines are crystal clear. <laughs> Get the hell back to Cerberus Station before we start a war with an unknown species. That's an order. Well, sir, to be quite frank, if we did that, we'd be leaving a man behind. There's a very pregnant pause, followed by the smashing of a teacup. But Followed by a very, like, what you would be able to tell from Crawford is a very controlled anger. What? Well, we were out doing readings uh, in a probe that we had modified in the time to get to Medell. Taking readings of the area and not noticing or not knowing that they were in the process of farming. We were trying to get a toxicology of the substance that they put into the water. When the farming occurred and Demos was taken in a probe. And you approved of this. Well, to be fair, at the time of the decision, it was not known that they were farming the people. We were trying to get a toxicology report, and Demos uh, and his body structure is the only one that can take the pressure that uh, would be present with the probe, or inside the probe due to the oceanic pressure. Midas floats behind. He is sturdy and then floats away. <laughs> He'll pause the communication for a split, like, whatever, mute it on his end. 
and just looks to the Admiral in in the time that the Admiral and Crawford have spent together, this would probably be the most angry that Zero's seen Crawford. Oh. And and I'm yeah. assuming Zero is equally pissed. Oh yes, her antennae are uh slanted uh I think it's slanted backwards up against her her head as a sign of aggression. And her one good eye is narrow and could probably bore a hole through any any point in this wall if it could do so. Cool. Okay. Um he'll unmute the communication. Mmm. Mmm. Out of character me. <laughs> Out of character, me wants to do something terrible, but in character, actually no. Before he unmutes it, they need to get Deimos back, don't they? Looking to the admiral. <laughs> As of right now, D. Yes, they do, because Deimos is very clearly a Starfleet officer. And represents a significant operational risk if he were to fall into anyone's hands. Of course. And now he unmutes the communication. Find a way to get him back, and then you're to come directly back here, where there are going to be some very serious talks between me and the Admiral. I figured as much. <laughs> We're in a pursuit course. We're handling it very delicately, considering the Apollo doesn't have weapons. Have you been able to tell if there's been any fire aboard the ship that Deimos is on? To our knowledge, no. I'm to sending your you a knowledge. Great. I'm sending you the schematics of the ships that we are encountering in the data stream that you should be receiving here momentarily. It's a ship that is unknown to us. Interesting. And I guess whenever he would mm, receive that data stream, whichever of the species, or I guess like yeah, whichever the species we've encountered in the Lysai Expanse that are currently still communicating with us, because mm -hmm. I know the Vitars aren't considering the uh, what you said is going on with them in the time skip. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll send the schematics out to all of those species if he can and see if any of them recognize those ships. Okay. That will take some time to hear back from them, but that can be done. Alrighty. Meanwhile, Admiral Zier stands bolt upright, straightens her tunic. I'm going to get my ship prepared for docking, or prepared to leave the station, just in case. And based on my understanding, it's the only one within range that has any decent firepower and a QSD. If you get coordinates, please send them to my ship. Will do, Admiral. And as she, even after the doors close, you can still hear her through your office door as she yells, Hey, Falcon, get my ship ready to launch. Yes, yes, Admiral. <laughs> okay, and we are going to cut back to the Apollo. So, after that, it, does that change the modus operandi of the Apollo? Or are you just going to continue to follow until they do until something else happens? I want to continue following. Uh, I know we need to get uh, Deimos back, but considering we don't have weapons and we don't know what kind of weapons they have, mm -hmm. I'm treating it very gingerly. Okay. Um, Mud and Jar, um, if you guys want to figure out, you know, 
do a heading, you know, figure out where these guys might be going, that would be an astro navigation check, which I believe would be reason plus con. And because they're heading into an area of space that you may have charted, but you haven't been to yourself, this is going to be a difficulty of three. So one of you can roll primary, and the other one can assist with one die. Reason con, I'm willing to bet um, Jar is probably going to be the lead on. Okay. Uh, so Jar, if you could please roll me a reason plus con, reason plus con test. Uh, roll me two d20. And difficulty of two. And if you have astro navigation as a, as a... focus, that would work. I don't have astro navigation, but you have anything to do with astrometrics? Okay, that is one success from Mud. Do we get any successes from Jar? Jar, uh, this is Sorry, I was looking at the wrong. That's all right. Yeah, so reason plus con. Okay. Um, con. Um, so, actually, I do have uh, a... Let me see. I do actually have uh, a talent called a technical expertise. Okay. Which okay. says something like um, you can roll one more D20 if you use the uh, the ship's computer or sensors or something. Okay. Is that, is that, that can be helpful? Um, I don't think that's going to be useful here. Let me just pull here, up the talent for... Well, is the ship assisting? Uh, ship is not assisting in this case. So no, because the ship has to assist for technical experts. Ah, okay, sorry. That's okay. So... Hmm. Okay, that's nice. a good roll. That's uh, four successes total, so you get two momentum. Oh, yeah! We're at five. Nice. Okay, so you believe... So based on the trajectory um, and where the ships are heading, it doesn't look like they know that you're present or in following them, and they're heading straight home. It appears that they are heading to a star that is across the... Um, so it is across the nebula... And it is fairly close to Vitaris or Zealous space. Uh, the planet, according to the star charts provided to you by the... Um, who were they? The Lashunt during the uh, peace talks a uh, few months back, uh, have labeled the planet uh, Kadriuk. And it... At, present warp at present speed it'll take about two days of travel to get there i will transmit that trajectory or that trajectory sit to Cerberus, saying that this is what we think is the is where we're heading but still following for confirmation Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Crawford will give that, uh, that trajectory to the Ushan, that was the name of your ship, right? That's right. Yeah, he'll send those coordinates there. Awesome. Okay. So, so, um, sorry. I don't. I don't think that at this distance I can use my sensors to sense uh, some sort of 
some, some sort of weakness in the in the ship uh, that you might use. Well, you can try. That would be a fairly difficult test at extreme range. Uh, let me look up the scan for weakness. I believe it is insight science, but we will find out momentarily. Because we're going war warp eight. Yeah. Because to go slipstream, we would beat them there, which doesn't yep. help the situation. It wouldn't, but it would, you know, you'd beat them there and possibly prepare. But you never know. Okay. The ship has an actual slipstream. I mean, mm -hmm. I just, I just want to actually, uh, uh, a reason to use my, my, my one, my one talent that might help you. <laughs> oh, and uh, what's that? That one, which he says, a, a, a tactical expertise. So if you use a computer or oh. or sensors from a ship, you you gain a ah. one or a plus of a plus D. That yeah. would probably you be useful. Let's see. Scan for weakness. So this would be a control plus science, and it would be sh assisted with the ship's sensors plus security. And yeah, this would probably fall under the technical expertise thing. Um, typically it would be a difficulty of one, but that assumes people are closer range. So this is going to be a difficulty of two. So control plus science. Uh, so that's two dice for you, Jar. And then someone can roll the ship, which is sensors plus security. I'll do the ship. I haven't rolled anything tonight. Oh, yes, it has. Go for it. I was going to say, I've been rolling a lot and you've been narrating a lot. I was going to say, I've done nothing tonight. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to roll first. Yep. Yes. Do you want any uh, extra dice? We have five momentum, so... You can definitely afford extra... them. Oh, is he? So oh, no. That's, that's fine. So I have two successes. Well, on... you have yeah. Two okay. successes, and you spent one momentum. And... No, tech technical expertise, he gets oh, a bonus. Of course he does. My bad. Right, that's me not listening. So that is two successes. Awesome. So you got the six sixes you need. Uh, so, so what else can I do with uh, momentum uh, aside from asking something? So, um, you can ask questions with momentum. You can buy extra dice for momentum. Uh, those are the primary uses for them from your position at this time. Uh, momentum can also be spent to create an, a, a narrative advantage. So if you want to spend two momentum and, you know, say that, you know, this situation happens in this way, then fantastic. Um, basically, a lot of it is to cheat the narrative and make the GM feel powerless. I see. So, yeah. I think I don't... I, I, I have the feeling that I'm not, I'm not going to get anything out of you, <laughs> so I'm just gonna save it for the, for uh, for some other time. Okay. Uh, so your scan for weaknesses. Um, this particular, well, these particular ships, uh, their shield, they're using a fairly old uh, shield generation uh, technology, which has to uh, reset itself every. Uh, well, about once a minute or so, uh, during which time their shields fluctuate just for a few seconds. It would be enough time for a, you know, well-timed transporter um, activity, provided you can get a lock on, and no one is actively sh trying to shoot or kill you. Or maybe they will, but either way, the transporter would work. Um, so, that is what so you learn. Hearing that information, I turn to Nia. Nia, get down and start running the simulations on the transporters in on the Apollo. See if you can get a transporter lock on. It would be Demos, but see if you can get a lock and a transport out in that time that the shields are fluctuating. I'll do my best, Commander, and Nia will head wherever he needs to go to do that. Yeah, that's probably a transporter room on this ship somewhere. It is Federation, after all. I was going to say, it was an old Federation ship. That... 
So you made civilian. Uh, so, Nia, you, perf uh, for the next several hours, you guys, um, hmm, pardon me, for the next several hours, you guys come up with simulations for running a, um, a split-second transporter beam, and we're going to cut to here, because something is going to happen, um, mud, det um, it, in the wee hours of the shift, Mud, you're taking a quick break, uh, letting Decon and her never sleeping ability run the navigation console for a few minutes. When all of a sudden, the USS Apollo drops out of warp. Uh, that is because the ships that she followed also dropped out of warp. By your rough estimate, you are at least still a day away from the planet of Kadriuk. Now, let's see. That's slightly bigger. That's there. Those are there. You guys are over here. So are the smaller ships like uh, scale three or scale two? Uh, they are scale two. They're like armed. They're like uh, gunships. Um, Fair enough. I had a way of rotating. I forget how that works. There we go. Mm, there we go. This isn't good. <laughs> And it turns out they stop for a very specific reason, because there is a deep space rendezvous. And that is with this t ship, which is somewhere. There it is. It's not long Ouch. until th this ship uh, drops out of warp right, bes right beside them. Both of the, of the uh, uh, same Void Nightmare. Uh, yes, the Void Nightmare is a well-known ship to... Yes, very well-known ship to us. Ah, uh, sorry. I didn't know that. And a uh, shuttle is... Or some encrypted communications t uh, happen between the two vessels. And I'm just going to sort of change the viewing so that everyone can see what's going on in stream. There we go. And a shuttle departs from the Void Nightmare to the on to the large freighter. And we are going to cut back to the interior of the ship. Demos, you um, you wake up with a sharp jolt of electricity to the side. Yeah, five, five more minutes, please. Um, you are heavily restrained against the side of the ship, and now you can see uh, several. Well, uh, your internal sensors have noticed that the humidity of this um, cargo bay has elevated by ninety percent. Uh, several of the empty tanks are now full of water, con seawater, containing various life forms, some of which are simple fish, uh, some of which are, uh, you recognize as Medel, the large jellyfish creatures. And there's one or two even larger cetacean whale or squid type creatures. They all seem to be categorized with MSRP, uh, with uh, price tags on them. In walks this individual, flanked by two of the guards. He walks right up to you, and he says, "Ah, so this is the individ This is the oddity that you had reached out to me for." Yes, I see. You have. You did the right thing by coming to me. I believe that me and my sister could do wonders with this technology as he stares you up and down. Why, hello, old friend. His eyes flash and his teeth grin. Oh, I thought I smelled something bad. I thought it was just these fish people, but it turns like it's just shit. Oh, you wound me. After all we've been through. Well, okay, we haven't been through much. But I, my understanding is if I pull out a pad... 
and data transmission device and enter a few p numbers here assigned with my thumbprint pass them off to these fine gentlemen here uh, you really should learn to your business partners they are their methods may be ruthless but well any smiles his toothy smile they are very effective uh, mr oh. demos you are now property of the void runner clan Really? Yes, I have the uh, certificate of ownership right here. One highly aggressive underwater probe. <laughs> well, I have to make it official with a handshake, right? Oh, no. No, see, the brace that you're attached to is solid titanium, usually meant to carry beasts or violent beasts from one planet to another under heavy sedation. No, no, you are not going to be removed from that until my sister gets her, gets a good look at you. She'll be so happy to see you. And here we thought that you were being a decent individual trying to make a new way in life. He pauses. And he gets really close to you. Now, Mr. Demos, I don't know what sort of trouble you've gotten yourself into, but do you really, really want Starfleet's name tarnished with these spe with these or ah, with the tarnished with the Yalexi? I don't even know if you've met them yet, and you this is probably not the first encounter you were hoping for. At least with me I can negotiate your safe return back to your people. Assuming, of course, well, and he turns and speaks a little louder. My sister doesn't dismember, dismantle you for parts and see what makes you tick. Demos just rolls his eyes. Like, yeah. Okay. Sure. Ooh, you got me. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you for the thank you for the deal, gentlemen. I will take my prize. I have no need for bioluminescent jellies. I still think they're overpriced. But you do what you do with them what you want. I'm sure there must be some people around here that find them a delicacy. Otherwise, why would you keep s trying to sell them to me? Do I see the guy knocked out? No, you don't. He is... <laughs> yeah, he is not knocked out. And elsewhere on the ship probably nursing a nasty internal um, bruising. Uh, which one was it? It was that one. Yes, he is wounded. He is over here. He has not fond memories of the encounter. And with that, Balthier um, has Balthier and two of the individuals have Demos chained up like are chained to a detachable titanium cross like device and begin to escort you to Belthier's shuttle. Really this is all unnecessary. I can walk without punching these guys in the face. I so wanna do to momentum spend to create the advantage. Well, <clears throat> oh, pardon me, I have to cough. My apologies. Okay. As Balthier brings Demos to the ship, or to his uh, waiting shuttle, he seals the door, uh, repressurizes the airlock, sends the um, disembarkation messages, uh, departs the shuttle bay, and will then push the uh, cuff deactivation uh, codes to free Demos and the Tritanium, uh, the, tr the Tritanium cross beam holding you in place falls back and clatters to the floor with a deafening clang. 
Uh, do my systems show any anomalies? Did they do anything to me while I was out? Uh, roll me a fitness plus medicine test, please. Uh, I will not tell you the difficulty. Uh, so one of my traits is medicine is substituted with engineering. Oh, okie dokie then. Uh, I will take uh, three momentum for two extra dice. Ooh, okay then. And would uh, artificial sense apply to anything? Uh, yes, trait? that would work well here. Uh, so what would that do for me then? Would that uh, lower it or give me advantage or? So um, what I will let that do. Uh, oh, right, because you're that's a trait, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So what that would do in this instance is um, if you let's see, you bought you spent three dice or three momentum for two dice, correct? Mm hmm. OK, um, so I will let the whatever difficulty I have in my head, I will lower it by one. All right. Yeah. Uh, two. No focuses. Yeah. Well, that's uh, three successes and a complication, which is enough successes uh, to determine what, the what if anything, they've done to you. I'll give you the threat for the complication. <laughs> okay, two more threat for the complication. Excellent. So I don't want to find out I have a bomb in my chest. Uh, you do. Yeah. Congratulations, you do not have a bomb in your chest, head, or other extremities. Um, you do detect that they attempted to um, perform some deep core uh, metal metallurgical analysis of your skin slash armor. So there's been a couple um, core samples dug out, small holes, nothing, nothing major. You're just, well, I wouldn't recommend you go swimming until you plug them. Uh, other than that, there doesn't appear to be any sort of harm that was done to you. Uh, I am going to walk up right behind Balthazir and look at him. He turns. Uh, he pushes the autopilot button to auto to auto run his shuttle back into his ship, and he turns around to you, and he has that stupid grin on his face. What? I just saved you from a life of slavery. Oh, I, I, I know that, but I was playing the part. Playing what? The... So you let yourself get captured? Mm, a little bit. You Starfleet types are baffling. Do you know that? Yeah, man, we're fun. It confirms that they're, well, one, stealing them, and we also found out that they're selling them for, you know, whatever they're doing. Yes, yes, Hadrian but, Station. They're yeah. attempting to break into the seafood business. Oh, now I really want to go back to that ship and shoot their warp core. Hmm. Well, if you want to be a poor rescuer, I'm more than happy to turn to just drop you back to turn this ship around and say that you are not what they marketed. He just yeah, just give me a second here, you little. He pull. He's like he pats around for that transponder. Ah, uh, you've it's still hidden within uh, your boots, your boot sole. You just reach down and grab it and press it. <laughs> Back on the Apollo, the transponder um, begins sounding from uh, the shuttle, leaving the freighter back to Balthier's ship. Is it the communication transponder or the transporter transponder? Transporter. Yeah. Balthier's going to look back. Yeah. And without saying a word, he just pushes a button and lowers his shields. So this is going to be a transporter test. So Nia, um, this yep. is going to be a. What's the phrase I'm looking for? What's I'm looking for? Oh right, control plus engineering. Uh, okay. Difficulty three, and mm -hmm. the ship will assist with sensors plus engineering. Okay. Um. Let's see. 
Uh, sure. Let's use Nia's determination here. Okay. Uh, value for any machine is my plaything. Yeah, that works. Who touched the Apollo? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a complication from the ship. That's fun. And another complication. Oh, from the <laughs> that's. Oh. Oh, no. You all oh, suck. That's the first oh, time I think I've gotten a result with two complication, two failures in it. That's. And on oh. something like a transporter task, that's dangerous. That's oh. very dangerous. Um, uh, what is my? I'm commanding officer of this, aren't I? You are. Yes. Can I give my determination for a reroll? Normally that's I mean, normally that's you know express that's a thing left for the captain I think but oh yeah I'll, that <laughs> does, that will not negate the Apollo complication though this is true so I get Ooh. to reroll my two yeah yes yes okay <clears throat> I kind of want to I'm tapping my value sometimes you just need to hit things oh so Jeez. I got the, I have the successes we need, but there's still a complication. There's still two complications. There's still two. I just like to imagine he's holding the transponder and it just beams away. Like, what the fuck? (laughs) Or I like to imagine that we somehow managed to get just the arm that was holding the transponder. Uh, No, how about about this? How about the hand with the Borg now? (laughs) I can roam around the ship now in anger. (laughs) How about... I have a compl- I have an interesting way to do the complication. Okay. Because we succeeded. So the transporter task will get completed. Like, Demos will become unharmed because the transporter task was uh, completed. However, it's been picked up by the other ones, and they are going to start pursuing us as they see it as we've stolen property. Yeah, that's basically how I'm planning on running that is... I mean, thank you for confirming that my plan was already going to be a good one, but... (laughs) Okay, so this is what happens. Let's cut back to the space scene. Where everything is about to go sideways in the most awesome way. Okay, so the Apollo. You have to move a bit closer to transport things. Uh, You beam Deimos aboard. Um, however, for the first complication, uh, just due to the range and how things are, you also beam Belthier aboard. That's the first <laughs> complication. I mean, there, there's worse complications than that. Possibly. Oh, hey, you're not inside out. Yeah. No, the second complication is you only transport half of his sister. <laughs> uh, his sister was on one? the shuttle. Yeah, there's, there's three of them. Oh, yeah. Two of them are still normal. Um, Yeah, so (laughs) the other complication is is that these other ships notice that you're now here. And the two fighters are going to peel away and attempt to start chasing. Evasive maneuvers? Uh, Mud, daring plus con, please. Uh, as a miner, can I get to the bridge? You and Balthier get to the bridge. I will. Let's do that. You'll get to the bridge after the evasive maneuvers are. After uh, whatever. During con and how about close combat maneuvers? Yep, and yes. Karachi. <laughs> um, oh, Jesus. Okay. Um. Two nineteens. What is up with the roll? We, we used all the good rolls in the first half of the game. Apparently, so no. Mud does have determination. Yeah. Okay. I guess we're gonna pop Mud's determination. Okay. Uh, I mean, we don't have to. We, we just are to. gonna get hit. <laughs> this ship can get can't really get hit that well. Not again. It's got some. Yeah. It's got some in her. I know it's got some things in her. I know. I helped half. I help. <laughs> got ten shields and resistance three. 
Yeah, might as well. Let's pop, you know, pop his determination. Okay, so re-roll those zeros. Uh, wh sorry, what value are you going to tap? I think we're going to tap a new value. Oh. Which will be... Uh, I must think on this real quick. Flying thrill fancy. Of, it, it, oh, no. Um, in it for the thrill. Okay. I was just going to say, I'm scared of Demos. <laughs> let, me, let me succeed. <laughs> oh, God, no. Ooh. Okay, you need a success of one here, please. That's all you need. One degree of success. Can you do it? Oh, oh yes! That is two critical successes. Awesome. So, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, three momentum. Uh, the ship can assist with structure plus con. I'm not touching the ship. I'll touch the ship. Uh, structure con? Structure con. Nope, that's engineering, not that. So went from two near crit, or crit fails, and to two crit successes. That maxes you out at six momentum, folks. Okay. So, the two gunships are going to come in. And at long range, they are going to attempt to... Uh, let's see, how much threat do I have left? I have that much. Hmm. One of them is going to stay at range and fire a torpedo. And that's a success. Cool. Did we take evasive action though? Oh, you did. My apologies. That is that would be four d twenty or four successes needed for a torpedo, which would miss. Yeah. Uh, the other one, on the other hand, gets cl up close with cannons. Oh no. Oh no, these ones are going to hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's four successes. Oh. Nice. It's a, sh it's a shame I don't get threat for critical successes. I'm okay with this. I'm not. Okay, and their security is that. Oh, that is a button. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Somewhere is in the distance. <laughs> Wrong macro. That's not the diplomatic damage. <laughs> oh my god. Wrong. Yes. Yeah. Wrong. The relationship between our V and and that ship. Yeah. <laughs> no. We That's do a... have six momentum that we could do something, create the advantage <laughs> of mud banking that. hard. And because they're cannon, that ups that. Oh. Okay. Um. Seven disruptor. However, because they are. Small craft, I believe that number is halved. And I don't really want to look up the rules for small craft, so I'm going to immediately say that the result is challenge dice divided by two, uh, rounding up. So that is only four. Um, plus Three resistance, yep. so one. Plus one resistance, and what do I get out of that? What can I do with threat on a disruptor cannon? Hmm. <laughs> I thought that's what it was called. It was not. Highlights. That's it. Okay. Apologies while I double check what I can do with uh, disruptor cannons. Neat, neat, neat. And disruptors do vicious one. Okay, so that will be five points of damage to the so if you have resistance 3 I think that means you lose 2 shield okay and yeah so that's going to be that so Demos you uh, the Apollo shudders a bit as Demos reaches the bridge uh, Belthier is protesting his highly illegal capture and you'd better believe that he will he was attempting a diplomatic mission of, or, sorry, I was attempting a mission of mercy, only to be abducted by my own, by the people I was trying to help. About there, yeah. we'll we'll get you back. Don't don't worry. It was not necessarily what we attempted to do. The uh, metallurgic composition of your shuttle made it so that we could not. 
get a single lock, so we had to do a area transport. He snorts. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna hop on helm. Okay. Uh, you push mud out of the way. Oh no, I'm going to the front helm. Oh, you're the the main helm up front. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I'm just gonna look to Del. I'm like, uh, shall we let his ship know through covert means that we have the captain? Yes. Let the, let his sister know that we have him. He's safe. It was unfortunate that we had to to tell, transport him, but we couldn't get a single lock. We have no. the com- the captain and the admiral breathing down our necks. We've got to de-escalate the situation as soon as possible. What would you tell them? That you were out doing toxicology reports and got abducted. Perfect. And uh, he's just going to look at the little fires on that ship there. Like, they might be killing them and selling them for food. Just as a heads up. That's what I was kind of afraid of. Balthier, what can you tell us about these people? Well, before we go into any further detail, uh, if we want to let the Void Nightmare know that we have their captain without giving up that he knows us, shall we make a scene? Yes. Okay. Yeah, very uh, well. So let's do a communications test because you technically are in combat. <clears throat> uh, Decon, can you hold him by the throat, not crushing, but just menacingly? And uh, tell him that we've claimed him for the Dread Empire. She <laughs> she lets out a bit of she lets out a fangirl squeal that you're finally asking her to commit harm against a mortal. Don't really hurt him, but we're just prop him up. Yes, don't really hurt breathing. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <sighs> And I just I, I zoom in the uh, the uh, what do you call it? the view screen on her and him so everyone else is blocked out. Okay, uh, roll me a. So, who is running communications? That sounds like a sciency kind of thing, or maybe an engineering kind of thing. Uh, Mud's prop is uh, Mud. Are you down at tell? No, not Mud. Nia. Nia's down run down. I can run it. Yep. Okay, so either Nia or Jag, I think, would be good here. Um. What? I haven't gotten a roll. Okay, let's let's roll Dalrum. <laughs> Dalrum needs to roll something. Uh, Dalrum. I was gonna say I have a three in engineering. Okay. I don't suck. <laughs> okay, Dalrum. Well, I have four in engineering. Uh, okay, I suck. Uh, commander's prerogative. We'll, right. we'll, we'll let Dalrum roll. Yeah. Okay. Uh, communications. This is going to be a control plus engineering test. Okay. And the ship will assist with communications plus engineering. And there is going to be a difficulty of... Eh, typically, difficulty zero, but you already have enough, all the momentum you need. So, I'm just... Yeah. So, yeah. Let's do this more of the encrypted channel variety, so I'm going to set the difficulty at two. Okay. I'm going... Since we have six momentum, I'm going to... Spend one mm-hmm. for a third die. I'd say spend uh, do two more so we get four dice. If we're going to do encryption to send a message to the Void Nightmare that he's fine, but we're making we're masking within a broader message. Okay, might as well. Yeah, I'll do that. Will diplomacy work as a focus? I prefer if you had like theatrics. Um, <laughs> uh, but... Does 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 count as an activation for decon? Yeah, it would count as an activation for decon. Um, Can I give her the focus of monologuing? <laughs> I mean, she's done a good amount of it in the past, so yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I still have to succeed on the communications focus, though. <laughs> yes, uh, please do. Um, so someone can pull up decon's sheet. I think she would be the best to assist with this. Control plus oh. engineering. I'm oh. rolling four dice. No, nope. decon won't assist. That is the ship assisting. Let's composure, tactical systems. I think composure would work here. Okay. 
Now you're doing a good job with the camera control. <laughs> well, that's uh, three successes. <laughs> what the? <laughs> and a complication. Okay, that's a thing. Uh, I mean, we the got the two successes we needed. Yeah, yeah, no one's debating that. Um, okay. What is with me? <laughs> I have rolled a crit fail every time I've rolled tonight. <laughs> um, okay, so there is a subtle snapping, but uh, or as uh, Decon is giving her monologue about how he is now prisoner of the newly reborn Dread Empire, and the fir- and his con or and his body will be the first upon which a pyre shall be built of all who oppose. You hear a bit of a subtle snapping. Um, as, uh, even though he is partially being theatrically choked, um, yeah, she somehow manages to dis to pop off, or, that ah, dislocate his shoulder blades, or his shoulders entirely. Uh, oh. Belthier lets out a massive scream of pain. I like to imagine, like, he's being held, he's like, ah, 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 this sucks, and then she snaps, like, oh god! <laughs> Funny enough, as uh, he snaps, uh, she just seems to smile all the wider. And that's when we turn tail and book it. Okay. Um, Jumping everybody... right to QSD. Have fun with them. Try and keep up with us. Okay. <clears throat> just for a few minutes to get away, far enough away that they think we're completely gone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, do me... So roll me a QSD test, please, which I believe is going to be a control plus con, and the ship will assist with computers plus con, and it is a difficulty of two. Uh, I'm going to use the last three, or two extra dice, just, just to really make sure we succeed. Okay. Uh, and who wants to get the ship? Can Dalrum roll? He's had good luck. No. Oh. No. <laughs> no. I'll roll up again. What okay. am I rolling for the ship? Uh, you're rolling computers plus con. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you can just take the threat for that. Uh, I mean, I'm sort of nearing the end of the session. I kind of don't want to do that <laughs> we got our three yeah. How, what is the difficulty for this difficulty two so you do do oh. it um as you turn tail and run the other the ship with the cannons is going as a complication it's going to fire once more okay we actually have two because i forgot to give us one from the last time yeah um and because you had not engaged evasive maneuvers i believe that's going to hit doesn't that last until the end of Mud's turn? I believe it was the beginning of Mud's turn. Uh, let me double check that. Evasive... We haven't rotated around everyone. No, we haven't. I've sort of been, you know, running fast and loose with combat because I have grievances with how combat runs by the rules here. Um... <clears throat> nope, back one. Evasive action. Flight controller moves swiftly, unpredictably. Yada yada yada. Uh, if successful, until the flight controller's next turn. Okay, never mind. So it misses. <clears throat> yeah. So it attempts. My warp to, trail. It attempts to swoop in, and just as it about is about to launch its uh, barrage of disruptor cannon fire, a minor wormhole opens up, and the SS Apollo immediately gives the middle finger to all known laws of physics. And you guys, so you, whereabouts are you going? Just a way away? Uh, I'm saying us, of course, back to the uh, uh, the world we're just at. Because to Demos, it's only been a few hours. Yeah, okay, back to Medell. Although, it's been several days, so we're just, like I said, it's just a few minutes to get us away enough that the, their sensors think that we're gone. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'll do that. Okay. Um, Belthier looks completely flabbergasted at this style of transportation. Uh, well, he would be if he wasn't cr- 
in pain. Actually gasping. <laughs> um, so let's do a first aid test here, Doctor. Uh, doctor had to drop his headset died. Oh, did he? Oh, I'm, that's what I get for not paying attention. Okay. Um, well, Doctor, uh, the doctor is happy to take the patient down to what counts as, as a sick bay on this ship and will attempt to do the best he can. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So you are free and clear. And about... Uh, two hours or so, the Void Nightmare catches up to where you are. And there is a hail from everyone's favorite, slightly psychotic genius, Zilla Void Runner. Hey, oh, Zilla. Uh, hi, Zilla. Hi. I Apparently, we own you now. So if you could just, you know, bring my brother back and come yourself, I would so love to dress you up and take you out for dinner. Didn't we do that last time, though? Oh, you're right. She sort of hums and haws. Ooh, I know. Let's go and see some scenery. There's got to be something nice around here. I mean, we can go to the Carstory Nebula. There's always something fun to see in that ball of gas. Ooh, that's a good idea. Oh, no, that, that silly idea. That's where you guys live. My brother says to avoid you unless he has a specific plan that... or. Something he needs to do there. Oh, really? Oh, yes, absolutely. Have you guys been keeping your nose clean? Keeping uh, honest and true? Absolutely. 100%. Big Sis has done a wonderful job of ensuring that no more uh, invisible hunters are, attempt are trying to hurt us. And uh, you're not just saying it because your brother told you to say that? Oh no, not at all. This is this was my project. I'm very proud of how Big Sis turned out. Maybe okay. you, should, you should meet her one day. She's not with us. Yeah, one day. Uh, yeah, your brother's um, napping right now. The, oh, that's uh, so the, young. Yeah, he, he you know he was such a drama queen about acting that he demanded a nap afterwards, and you know how actors are. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go. Come on. Uh. Oh, didn't he tell you? Uh, yeah, he freed me the moment he bought me. She. What? Why would he do that? I so wanted to see what makes you tick. That your power systems alone would be enough to power the ship for another generation. Why, if I could re figure out how to reconstitute your your frame. I could become immortal. <gasps> yeah. Please, yeah. please, 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 please. Uh, how, about, how about this? When the soul sun enters entropy, then we'll talk. Oh, that's good. That's like forever. Just a few billion years. She sighs. Fine. Just give me my brother back. Okay. And I'll just cut comms. I was like, she's actually rather nice. She seems to be getting better. Mm. Well, let's go. Uh, wake up, wake up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I walked. I go down into the uh, med bay. Hey, Balthier, your sister's here. <laughs> uh, the doctor. Uh, he's he leans up on a bio bed that is probably uh, slightly too small for his elongate for his tall frame I, I thought I got rid of this room the doctor said uh. it um, uh, doc, doctor so ah uh, the doctor says well I did have to spend some time clearing out a significant amount of um, old computer cores from this room Right. That's where I put them. Thank you. You're welcome, Lieutenant Commander. Yeah. And he's just going to walk over and give Balthair a couple of smacks across the cheek lightly. Like, come on, wake up. He wakes up and... <clears throat> and with the... We're, uh, because we're nearing four hours, I'm just going to push the fast-forward button on the story for a 
just to cut to the final scenes, if that's okay with folks. Yeah. You know, pretty much know how this part's going to end out. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, we are going to cut back to the station where in opera. where I'm getting my I'm getting reamed. So, <laughs> operations, let's see. No, we're going to be at Air, we're going to be in the shuttle bay because that's where the uh, that is stellar cartography. That is not the shuttle bay. It was close. Almost okay. there. Close, though. That is the there shuttle bay. There we go. Okay, so hey, Demos. We're almost all there. Uh huh. Demos is waiting. Or Demos, Doldrum, uh, Jar, and, well, I'm assuming Demos and Doldrum are the first out. Is that about accurate? Yes, yeah. I'm on there twice. Yep. Yes, yes, you are. We don't need you talking to yourself. <clears throat> um, uh, Keevan, do you want to be here? Sure, yeah. Okay. Would I? I would like to make a request for Zir to be there if oh, she's yes. able to. I am attempting to find her token. There she is. I thought she uh, booked it. Oh yeah, she nah, booked, she... she booked it. But as soon as well, uh, she didn't necessarily book it. She was prepared to leave should she be needed. Yeah, the Ushan booked it to the coordinates that was given, and then booked it back the second that he realized that what was going on. So she may be a slightly late to the party, but the Ushan is definitely not going to miss this. Okay, Doldrum, Demos, Captain, Keevan, Jar, if you <laughs> happen to be brave enough to face what's coming. I walk <laughs> out. Hello, Captain. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm going to send then my, my comments. <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest standing in the background because it's going to get a firing ground on Dolrum. Your job, Commander, was to figure out what was going on with the Mandel and render aid to them. Not follow whatever was doing it and figure out what the hell they were doing. You were supposed to help the Mandel and that was the only order you had. Instead... Yeah. You did. You probably almost caused a war with an unknown species. Not so unknown anymore. As you learned probably on the way back here, which you don't really know anything about them yet. And risk the lives of one of our officers in the process. Well... In the beginning, we were following orders. We were rendering aid. We were trying to get a toxicology of the chemicals that were being used. And then it turned into, we had to rescue our man. Also, the Medilla did ask us for our help. They did. And part of that help was to try to determine what was going on. And we were following orders still. The fact that this new species is kidnapping them and turning them into sushi. Literally. They're taking them, they know they're sentient, and then they're cutting them up. Do the, uh, Admiral Zier steps forward. Do you know that? As far... Based on what we saw at this station, the USS Ushan and my science officer was uh, investigated and found that they were attempting just to sell them off as aquarium decorations to the rich and powerful. It's due to the Medell's attempts, or how the Medell communicate is completely alien to most M, to most class M, ah, to most species. If they're able to bore into my material, they have enough technology to understand that they can at least attempt communication. You're pl you're placing a lot of actions on hunches off that may or may not have been made in retrospect, Mr. Demos, Commander Dalrum. 
I leave you to the captain for disciplinary action. However, Captain Crawford, you haven't... Your crew appears to have be developing a nasty streak of martyrdom heroics. I would strongly suggest that you ensure that this trend stops. I look forward to reading your reports collectively. And with that, she will storm out and leave whatever follows to you guys. Well, Captain, we did run into an old friend of ours. It's obvious to say, at this point, Crawford's obviously down here. <laughs> but, oh, absolutely. Yes. An old friend. Balthier Void Runner. What did he seem to be there for? Actually, he was there getting Demos out of the situation. Well, apparently they determined I was sentient. That's interesting of him. He called uh, the species the Yale Yale Yalaxi. That is the sound that one made when I hit him. <laughs> they are the Yalaxi. They seem to be traitors, but or traitors in the this section of space, but more along the lines of black market from what we were seeing and from what Balthier was the information we were getting from him. Hmm. And don't worry, the Federation wasn't implicated. The Dread Empire was. Well, that remains to be seen, doesn't it, Lieutenant Commander? If you're upset that I decide to find out what was happening to Ascension life form and then learn that they're being turned into food or slave or items for the rich, I have no regrets. Did you, happen we to were fire... following... Did you happen to fire any of these species, Lieutenant Commander? Or cause harm? Self-defense. They started firing at me first. And I tried to knock one out. Then they continued to fire at me. Hmm. If you're wondering yeah. if I took one of my specialty guns, no. I didn't use any of those. I tried to first talk with them. Hopefully intimidate them to stand down and, and continue to talk with them. They continued to proceed to fire. Hmm. Remind out of game out of game McCall. What was the name of that? Uh, I believe they were vaguely not scorpion like, but the species that like uh, like praised. Oh, the light the light worshippers. Yeah, those yeah, guys. The Jin Sul. The Jin Sul. That's right. <laughs> Considering your recklessness with the Jin Sul, Lieutenant Commander. I have a slightly hard time believing some of that. And uh, Crawford will walk up to Demos and uh, he's going to take the black pip off of his uniform. Okay. You'll get this back when you've earned it. Commander. And he'll get my respect when you earn it. Commander? Yes? You will receive a reprimand on your record, and both of you... Demos just turns around and starts doing the little talky-talky motion with his hand as he leaves. Both of you will be seeing... Lieutenant Dak Lorza for multiple counseling sessions. And Commander, you will be working in tandem with Commander Surratt to make sure you straighten your shit out. Am I understood? 
Yes, sir. And that Lieutenant is... Jargavem, Lieutenant Commander uh, Solek, Solken, <laughs> get the hell, get out, the of hell out of here. You're all dismissed. Uh, that's just me. Lieutenant I can dismissed. I can, is... I can whisper something to Nia. I've always known we we're gonna uh, survive that. It was clear. It was my my very best, my very first mission. You know, it was evidence that, I'm, that we're gonna survive. That. I don't think this is the right time, Lieutenant. We should go. <laughs> okay, I'm going back to astrometric science. And I believe that is going to be a good place to end the session. So. I hope you all had fun. I hope that the new players had fun. And we will be seeing all of you. <clears throat> we will be seeing all most of you, hopefully, next week for a lighter episode. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.